Spring is in the air, and after years of missing out, college students and families are making spring break a priority this season, with hotspots in Florida, the southwest, and south of the border at the top of the list, according to travel booking site Hopper. If you're headed to a very popular warm weather spring break destination, you should be booking your flight now. Travel costs are not immune to inflation. Hotel rates are up 64 percent from last year and flights cost 20 percent more. But there are spring break deals out there. Hopper advertising $82 round trip flights to Orlando from New York, Boston to San Diego for $190 and Newark round trip to Turks and Caicos for $260. But the clock is ticking. Families heading to vacation hotspots should book as soon as possible. Prices might rise by more than $200 a ticket in the weeks closer to spring break. Expect full flights and hotels and make contingency plans in case of flight cancellations. For budget-conscious travelers, be flexible. Midweek flights can be up to $100 cheaper per person. Wait to book big city hotels. Last-minute room deals can save you up to 25%. And consider a staycation. One of the best ways to get an incredible deal when you do a staycation is to reach out to local hotels or accommodation providers. Ask if they have a geofenced rate. Hotels often will offer a lower rate to residents of the town, the community, sometimes even the state, to incentivize locals to stay at their accommodations. Meanwhile, international travel has also roared back with Asian destinations like China, Japan and Indonesia reopening post-pandemic and attracting crowds of young people eager to experience a new part of the world and take advantage of the strong dollar. When you add up hotel, eating out, Ubers to and from airports, the total amount of money you're spending to go somewhere in the U.S. might actually be the same amount you would spend going somewhere in Asia or Europe. Savvy travelers should plan out a complete budget, including the cost of taxis, rental cars, food and drink, and excursions. Tips to maximize your spring break without breaking the bank. If you're thinking about hitting the open seas, cruise lines are offering some big savings right now. Roller coasters, go-kart racing, water parks, not on land, but at sea. And with several new ships arriving this year, cruises can be found at all price points, like this three-night cruise in the Bahamas for under 300 bucks per person, or a seven-night voyage for two on the Mediterranean for 2,900. As travel restrictions ease, families are ready to hit the high seas. Well, I think there was an appetite for people who really wanted to travel and really weren't doing it during the pandemic. Colleen McDaniel is the editor-in-chief of CruiseCritic.com. Why is cruising back in such a big way? Cruising is bringing new ships. They are loaded with amenities and things to do. Activities like go-kart racing or rock wall climbing, all these cool things that you can do ashore, you can now do on a cruise ship. Just how big is this wave of reservations? Celebrity Cruises had its largest booking day ever on Black Friday. Holland America up 20% from 2019. And Royal Caribbean had its biggest booking day in the company's 53-year history. Among the most popular destinations, Alaska and Northern Europe's British Isles, Greenland and Iceland. McDaniel says start by working with a travel agent, especially if you've never cruised before. And don't pick based on price. Tell the agent what you want to do. Pricing will be a part of it, but it shouldn't be the biggest factor because if you don't have that great ship, you're not going to have the perfect experience. If you're booking the cruise yourself, look for discounted gift cards on websites like Rays or CardCash.com. We found this one a $500 value for $430. If you apply several gift cards to your purchase, the savings really add up. So how do you make the most of your experience and save money once you're on board the ship? Well, to show you, I'm here on The Gem by Norwegian Cruise Lines. And with me, Stephanie Cardell. She's the director of communications. So, Steph, what should folks think about once they set foot on board? Sure, there's so much to do on board. Everybody loves to dine and eat when they're on board the ship. So make sure you go down and you get your specialty dining package if you haven't done so yet. Same with your unlimited beverage package. You know, if you want to spend days around the pool um, having your favorite cocktail, make sure to do that first. And those packages tend to save you more money than if you bought la la carte. Absolutely. And then you have some tips on saving on the rooms too. 
Yep. Let's go check those out. Great. So Steph, what do you need to think about when it comes to accommodations if you're on a budget? It really depends what type of traveler you are, right? Or if you're traveling solo, we have studio state rooms, right? So they're designed and priced for the solo traveler. If you're looking to just spend um, more of your time outside, enjoying the pool deck, enjoying the bars, the entertainment, then an inside state room might be for you. Or if you're looking to spread out in more luxurious accommodations or if you have a large family, something like this, the three bedroom Haven Villa, might be a great option for you. And you can split the cost if you're traveling with another couple or some other friends. Absolutely. It's like having your apartment out at sea. Thank you. My pleasure. The cost of drinks can really add up on a cruise, but check out cruiselead.com. They have a drink calculator that can help you figure out which drink package to save you the most money. However you vacation, grab some me time. The best time to save on the spa when the ship is docked. You have a secret tip for saving at the spa. What's that? So on port days, there's always a special. So keep an eye out. You'll get a notice in your room, and it'll tell you what that special is for the port. And the better deals are as the cruise is getting closer to its end. Up next, sharing a home share. From planning to safety, what to figure out before your next dream vacation so it doesn't turn into a nightmare. And later, what you need to know about new subscription services at popular restaurants. That's all ahead on Consumer Confidential. Welcome back to Consumer Confidential. It's become an alternative to hotels and resorts renting a vacation home. And it could be a good way to save money. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to finding the perfect vacation home for your next trip. Need an escape from the daily grind? For your next family vacation, you could relax by the pool at this home in Port St. Lucie, Florida for $333 a night. Or watch the sunrise at this oceanfront condo in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for $507 a night. Or enjoy the view from the hot tub at this luxury chalet in Steamboat Springs, Colorado for $1325 a night. These rentals all big enough to share with another family. It's a popular travel trend as many look to give their wallets a break this spring. The average family of four now spends more than $4,500 on a vacation each year. But by buddying up at a home share, you can split the cost with others, saving you money while making priceless memories. Last year, Airbnb reporting family travel nearly doubled to 98% in the U.S. alone. And a recent Verbo survey finding this year, 57% of travelers plan to take trips more often with groups of friends. To rent a big, huge, you know, three-floor house or cabin would have not made financial sense. So splitting it with a family was perfect. Karen Ensley, her husband Will, and their daughter Sienna escaped to the great outdoors with some friends in the Pocono Mountains. After discussing their budgets, the two families searched Airbnb to find a spacious cabin within their price range. We wanted to make sure we had enough space so that the two families could be together but separate. Ensley says they took in the sights and the savings, as the outdoor toys included with the rental provided entertainment. The families also split the grocery bill. It ends up being cheaper than a hotel. But when vacationing, the phrase, the more the merrier, doesn't always apply. 
Travel preparedness expert Cheryl Nelson says before booking a shared space, discussing the details can help ensure everyone goes and comes back as friends. What about if you're traveling with another family on a shared vacation? What are some tips to make it out of that <laughs> intact? There's got to be some house rules that you set. Are there quiet hours? Agree on that. What about pets? Don't bring your dog if somebody else is bringing their cat. And kids, how are the kids going to play? Talk about the budget, how much space you need, and if you want to split the cost per family or per person. Nelson even suggests assigning rooms ahead of time. A lot of the times there's only one, maybe two master suites in the house. You don't want everybody fighting over that when they get there. Other topics to consider, how to split food costs, how much time to spend together and apart, sleep habits, and as Ensley learned, who does the chores? If one family's cooking, maybe the other one cleans that day and, and you kind of switch back and forth. When considering a home rental, Nelson says make safety a priority. Only rent from verified hosts. Read all the reviews about that property. You can also check out the surrounding area by entering the address on a street view map. And one more tip, you can see the recent serious crimes there if you put the address into crimemapping.com. What are some red flags you should look for in a listing? If they don't provide any sort of picture of a doorway or external pictures, that might raise a red flag. Nelson shows us her first safety check. Does the rental have a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide alarm? You can also bring your own. This one's portable. All you do is plug it into the wall. She then uses a flashlight to look for hidden cameras. Ideally, I'd close the blinds, lights would be off. And as I'm lounging, I would just start pointing this at vents. If you see anything reflecting back at you, there might be a hidden camera in there. And she checks drawers for sharp objects and drugs or chemicals. Tips to keep your home share travels full of good, clean family fun. Still to come, how to avoid paying extra airline fees and later, deal or no deal, how to find the best prices at your grocery store. We're back after this. Welcome back. Consumers are already battling inflation, and now it seems we're also seeing more of those so-called junk fees charged by airlines. NBC's Tom Costello spoke to our friends on the Today Show about a new policy that could make flying cheaper. It's a travel hassle familiar to any family traveling with kids. Either shell out the extra cash for seat selections up front or try to wing it at the gate. Now United Airlines is rolling out a new seating policy to make the skies a bit friendlier, allowing accompanying parents and adults to sit next to children younger than 12 without paying extra. 
That's a big deal for parents like Nathan Herrig and his family of four. It takes away one of the most stressful parts of flying, which is, you know, uh, what am I going to do with my kids on the flight? Along with the ticketing policy, United says it's also unveiling new technology that will open up more seats on its flights to help automatically keep younger children next to an adult in their party, giving access to regular economy seats and preferred seats if needed. No extra fee. It's not uncommon to see seat selection as much as 50, 60 or $70 per person. And so if you're talking about a family of four, that can run well over $200 just to reserve your specific seat. The new feature will be available to families purchasing either regular tickets or basic economy tickets, which typically have more restrictions. The move comes as regulators, lawmakers, and the White House have taken sharp aim at so-called junk fees that airlines charge. We'll prohibit airlines from charging $50 round trip for family just to be able to sit together. Baggage fees are bad enough. Airlines can't treat your child like a piece of baggage. The airline industry says carriers try to seat families together, often at the gate, but families sometimes buy seats together that cost more. Experts say United's new boarding tool should remove some of the boarding stress for families. It's going to be better for uh, airline gate agents who don't have to try to play musical chairs. All right, Tom, some good tips, but if families are booking with other airlines outside of United, how can they avoid that seating yeah. fee? Yeah, let's walk through a couple of tips for you. Uh, first of all, you should try to call the airline in advance. If you're going ahead and booking online, First of all, try to see if you can book together. That may be difficult, but give it a shot. Call the airline in advance. Explain to them you're traveling with young kids. And if that doesn't work or if they simply can't help you, the agent at the gate, hopefully, at the airport can help you as well. And here's a good tip. If you're traveling with kids, try to choose maybe a seat, all seats in the back of the plane. Those usually don't fill up as fast, and usually those are not premium seats. It's easier to get seats together. Closer to the bathroom, yeah. too, by the way. Yeah. Prox, in that case, with little kids, not a bad thing. How about baggage fees? Because those can really add up to you, Tom. Well, you know, if you have status, if you fly a lot, usually your status will allow you to check a bag for free. But those airline credit cards usually will give you at least one, sometimes two bags for free. So consider that using a credit card for the airline that you're on. Also compare the policies. Not all airlines charge to check bags. Southwest still does not. So you might want to be looking and considering whether that's a factor. And then if you want to try to avoid that checking the bag fee, you might want to try to carry on and then check the bag at the gate. However, your bag can't be so big it doesn't fit through the TSA x-ray machine. It's not just airlines that are tacking on those fees, hotels, concerts, even banks too. So how can we avoid extra fees? NBC's business reporter Brian Chung recently shared some ways to cut down on costs. All right, so we're going to take it one step at a time by the by the numbers. Let's start with those dreaded banking fees. What are we working with here? Yeah, well, it costs a lot to use plastic Chanel. And the number I've got for you here is $29.80. Okay. That number comes from bank rate. That's how much it costs to overdraft. You don't have enough money in your checking account. The bank has to move from your savings account, and that's going to cost you a lot of money. So that make sure up. you have enough in your checking account. Yeah, but look, yeah. there's a lot of other fees that are associated with using bank services as well. Okay. ATM fees, $4.66. Per what? Per transaction. That's also according to bank rate. So if you want to avoid that, try to stay inside your debit card network. Take a look at the back of the plastic to make okay. sure you know where to use it. And then there's also credit card late fees, right? Mm -hmm. On top of the interest that you're going to pay for anything that's overdue, you're also yep. going to get this late fee of about $30. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is actually proposing under the Biden administration to cap that at $8. Really? And, yep, and the CFPB, again, it's a proposal right now, okay. but they say that could save Americans about $9 billion. And by the way, mm -hmm. Chanel, for all these fees, if you do face it, try to give your bank a call. Just say, hey, look, I'm really sorry about that. Maybe can you waive it? I've done it before with the overdraft Right, especially fee. if it's just one time. Exactly. And yeah. the worst they could do, say it's no. Say no. Yep, okay, exactly. to save that money. All right, next, let's talk about, this is a good one, the extra costs yes. we pay for cable yeah. and internet. <laughs> yeah, really expensive. And, and the number I've got for you right here is 11.3%. That's the estimated inflation that we've seen just since the beginning of the pandemic for your cable fees. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's on top of what Consumer Reports estimated was $450 in yearly cable fees that people are paying. So fees, and not just wow. the... Just well, the, that is actually the bill, but oh, it that's includes the bill. fees, which okay. I'm going to get to right here. Company imposed fees as part of that are about 24%, according to uh, mm. Consumer Reports. But I feel now, like it feel, you feel helpless. Like, you get the bill, and you have 
all those fees on there. What are you supposed to do? Well, you, you, I mean, you can call the cable company and try to yeah. see if you can negotiate some of those fees. But there are things like, for example, modem rentals. They'll okay. say you have to rent from us. That could be up to fifteen dollars a month. You could buy your own modem, your own router mm -hmm. from Best Buy, for example, and then yeah. save yourself the monthly fee. Okay. And also watch out for cancellation fees. If you try to get out of a contract early, could be up to two hundred dollars. But again, try to give your cable company a call, and also maybe consider cutting the cord if it's going to save you money just by streaming instead of buying a cable. But those streaming, those streaming services have all been jacked up. Yeah, all yeah, exactly. So you got to do the math and try to see based off of what channels you want whether or not it ends up working out. All right. It's crazy. All right, so if you actually get off the couch <laughs> yep. and leave the house, we all want to do experiences. There's concerts, there's games, but the fees attached to ticketing is yep. also up. Dylan, so the number I've got for you is 27 to 31%. That's the average ticket fee. This is where we feel a lot of the pain. Mm -hmm. A lot of T-Swift fans will know this <laughs> as well, right? Now, let's do the math, right? Average concert ticket, according to uh, Polestar, is $108.20. So with another fee on top of that, mm -hmm. that's going to be another $30 just right. to get into the stadium. Average NBA game, I'm a huge Brooklyn Nets fan. I know this for a fact. $94, but again, the fees are mm -hmm. added on top of that. It's very expensive just to get inside the Barclays Arena. And then the average discount theater tickets, this is according to Today Ticks Group. They're saying it's about $55. That's not just Broadway, that's nationally, mm -hmm. by the way. Again, you're going to face fees on top of that. There's so, no, what can you do for that? Well, one thing you can do is you could try to go directly to the box office. In many cases, you can get around these third-party ticket mm -hmm. resellers to get around the fee. And then also remember that you can actually try to join a fan club, for example. Okay. They might offer discounted tickets. Oh, that's a good idea. Well. Oh, it ticks yeah. me off is when you go and you buy your movie ticket online and they charge you a convenience yes. fee? Yeah, convenience fee. <laughs> What's up with what? that? What's so convenient yeah, about you're, that? You're, <laughs> you have fewer cashiers because I'm buying online. Stop it! <laughs> anyway, uh, travel fees. Yes, yes. What's the number well, there? Well, look, I get worked up just as much about travel fees as well. 30 to $35, that is the average airfare fees just for trying to pick your seat, just mm -hmm. to try to check your bags. Right. Things you can get around, try to check the bag maybe directly at the gate. I've got other numbers for you as well. Airport car rentals, another 23% more expensive to rent at the airport. Yeah. Oh, wow. Consider taking an Uber into a downtown location. Uh -huh. Renting from the same place could mm -hmm. be a lot cheaper. Resort fees, $40 just can for that. Can you negotiate those? Eh, it's kind of tough, but the Biden administration is looking at perhaps nixing these fees and then airbnbs this is where it gets i mean everyone's experiencing this 14.2 percent could be the fees on top of what you're quoted wow. yeah. check the card try to check out so you get a final mm -hmm. invoice and how much that's going to cost Brian Chung, great good numbers. advice Thanks so it much yep. coming up how to stretch your dollars at the grocery store plus what you need to know about new subscription services at popular restaurants With more Americans turning to discount stores to cope with high food prices, many traditional grocery stores are trying to lure back customers by pushing their own store brands and expanding loyalty programs. Here's how you can find the best deals. In aisles all across America, grocery shoppers are doing a double take. That's not even a cart full of groceries. As inflation sent food prices soaring, now more than half of all Americans, a whopping 60%, prefer non-traditional stores. Wholesale clubs like Costco or super centers such as Target and Walmart are often the go-to destination for food shoppers. That's causing a shuffle on the shelves. Some retailers to stay competitive for consumers are going to 
put items that are staple items on sale. They're also upping rewards on loyalty programs. As the grocery wars heat up, traditional chains like Kroger are leaning into their ability to provide fresh produce and relying on reputation to establish their own brand loyalty. What we find is uh, customers going from national brand to our brands and a customer is able to save 7 to 10 percent on a basket of goods when they buy our brands. They're also leaning into digital coupons, a big hit with shoppers. For us, our business model is designed to be successful regardless of the environment. The changing landscape can mean good news at the checkout. Stores like Aldi, which continue to expand, entice customers with cheap prices on popular brands. I think the prices are really good and they have a lot of good options. And I really like the frozen food section. I save about $100 at least a month. Discount stores are making a deep dent too. I spent $35 on a week's worth of groceries at Dollar Tree. With one in five people shopping for groceries at Dollar Chains. They want you to see that they have the exact same quality of a name brand for much less. And often you'll see a comparison between the two prices, two big stickers right next to each other. Retailers like Dollar Tree are even remodeling some stores to showcase groceries and kitchen staples and partnering with delivery app Instacart to reach new customers. With so many choices, if you want to keep your grocery budget in check, experts suggest jump on those buy one, get one offers for your essential goods and freeze what you don't use. Set up a meal plan for the week to limit overspending. And don't forget to take advantage of those loyalty programs that can cut costs in line. Take a beat before you go to the grocery store and really do the research. You will be so surprised how much money you can save. Now to a closer look at big changes happening in the food industry. Some restaurants are offering deals like subscription services and extra perks to keep customers coming back. NBC's Kaylee Hartung has the latest. From chicken to beef to eggs, the price you pay for food at the grocery store remains high. And restaurants, big and small, are feeling that same sting from inflation. Food is getting outrageous. Many businesses have been forced to pass on those costs to consumers, making the price you pay for dine-in and takeout meals more expensive. 8% more than you paid for the same meals last year. That ballooning bill, the main reason over 60% of Americans say they're choosing to eat out less often. I feel like I'm paying more money for either not very much food or not very good food. Now restaurants are trying to turn down the heat on inflation while still cooking up deals for their customers. Some restaurants are even offering subscription plans. At Asian food chain P.F. Chang's, patrons can now pay $6.99 a month for exclusive loyalty perks, including double reward points, jumping to the front of the wait list for a table, and free delivery. Industry insiders say that new revenue stream will help relieve some of the inflation stress on businesses. Have you all had to adjust your prices to reflect inflation costs? There's no secret that prices had to be adjusted, not only at our restaurant, but really everywhere, right? At this location in Los Angeles, employees say they're firing up more meals for P.F. Chang subscribers every day. Do you feel that people are really saving money by paying a subscription fee? I believe so. If you're a loyal customer and this is the place that you go to all the time, it's definitely worth it. At Panera Bread, a $120 annual subscription will get you into its unlimited sip club, where drinks and deliveries are available without any additional fees. Some smaller chains and local restaurants are thinking outside the box, offering inflation-conscious menus with options that are cheaper than a full-price plate. And restaurant operators are becoming pretty innovative in terms of how they operate in this extremely high cost environment. If you're looking to dine out without breaking the bank, look for daily specials, which often offer a side and a drink for less. Opt for a late lunch instead of a more expensive dinner portion. And if you plan to carry out, see if you can order directly online or through the restaurant's app to help avoid extra delivery fees. That's our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn.
In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, black-owned restaurants weren't just places to get a meal, several becoming crucial meeting spots for activists at the forefront of the civil rights movement. And the families still operating these restaurants today are committed to honoring their historic legacies. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. We're in Harlem, the epicenter of black culture in the United States. Now, many historians agree the Harlem Renaissance paved the way for the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s. So in this episode, we're traveling across the country to explore three legendary black-owned restaurants. For generations, these beloved eateries have been serving up dishes to historic figures and those fighting for change. First up, we're heading south to visit an iconic establishment that defied segregation laws. New Orleans, a city that celebrates food, music, nightlife, and history. In the Big Easy, you'll find many historic sites that played a vital role in the civil rights movement, like William Franz Elementary School, where six-year-old Ruby Bridges broke barriers in 1960, or New Zion Baptist Church, a hub for activists, and Treme, one of the oldest black neighborhoods in America. Here, you'll find the only restaurant on the U.S. Civil Rights Trail. Ducky Chase Restaurant definitely is a historical landmark institution here in New Orleans. This popular eatery is a living testament to a woman who changed the face of fine dining in America, Chef Leah Chase. I'm Stella Chase Reese, and I am the president of the corporation here at Ducky Chase's. And I'm Edgar Duck Chase IV, and I'm the executive chef here at Ducky Chase Restaurant. Stella's grandparents first opened Dookie Chase's as a po'boy shop, becoming a full-service restaurant in 1941. African Americans didn't have that place to celebrate, to celebrate birthdays, to celebrate promotions, to celebrate good grades, weddings, proms. So they opened up a place where that could happen. But the next generation had a new vision for the eatery. It was my father, Edgar Chase, Jr. and his wife, Leah Lange Chase, that continued the legacy that my grandparents started. Dookie Chase Jr. was an avid jazz musician who promoted some of America's first integrated concerts. His friendship with all the musicians, Ray Charles and Duke Ellington and Sarah Vaughan, we would hear stories of them after their performance coming here to dine at Ducky Chase. And Leah was determined to bring an elevated dining experience for her black patrons. She wanted the best china, she wanted linens, she wanted them to be served the best they could be served because she didn't want our community to be deprived of anything else than any other community had. That community was on the brink of a revolution years in the making. Post-1865 and the Emancipation Proclamation, with the masses of African-American people now free, the country was overwhelmed. Hierarchies needed to be reestablished. It was important from a white supremacist point of view that black folks knew their place. By the late 19th century, Jim Crow laws legalizing racial segregation in the former Confederate states. Those laws were further cemented by the Supreme Court case Plessy versus Ferguson, which upheld the separate but equal doctrine. But Dookie Chases defied those laws welcoming patrons of all races to dine and discuss political issues facing the black community. Their willingness and, and openness to everyone in the community made them a hub of safety, made them a hub of belonging. But that openness also made the Chase family a target. There were times that we had people throw things in and try to, you know, destroy the peace but that didn't frighten my parents. They continued because they know what they were doing was the correct thing to do. By the 1960s, Dookie Chases had become a go-to spot where activists could connect and strategize. 
We had the opportunity to serve many of our civil rights leaders, Martin Luther King, Jesse Jackson, Rosa Parks, Thurgood Marshall, the list goes on and on. And then Freedom Bus Riders, they came here. My parents realized that until we all learn to enjoy life together and get to that part where social justice would be for everyone, that this community or any other community in our country would not grow and will not be better. In the 1970s, Leah becoming passionate about promoting black artists. Her love of art was also celebrated here at Dookie Chase's when she gave African-American artists the opportunity to actually display their art on her wall because at the time, they had no place to display their art. Her extraordinary life, even becoming the inspiration for Disney's first black princess, Tiana. It meant a lot for her because she did have some of the kids dress up and come here. Leah Chase, the queen of Creole cuisine, passing away on June 1st, 2019. But her spirit and her culinary traditions are in vigilant and capable hands. This is Leah Chase's kitchen. It's set up the same way and we love it like that because as you know, she's still with us. She's still watching us. Chef Duke continues to serve Creole cuisine that's been on the menu for decades. From red beans and rice to shrimp clemenceau and the famous chicken a la Dukey. But the restaurant's most popular dish, gumbo. You think back to the civil rights era when we had leaders strategizing in our upstairs dining room. We fed them gumbo. You think about presidents today, President Barack Obama, President George Bush came here. We always started them with gumbo because my grandmother always believed that her gumbo will solve any problems. And we like to say her gumbo changed the course of America. Gumbo, an official state food of Louisiana. Dookie Chase's version has a little something for everyone. Not one, but two types of sausage. Some Louisiana blue crab. What we do here is we take the top shell off, we clean it up, and we just crack it in half, release some of those flavors. Chicken and shrimp. This is really coming out to be a beautiful gumbo. The gumbo simmering until it's ready to serve. I mean, if you just smell this, the neighborhood smelling this, everybody knows when Dookie Chase is cooking gumbo. Today, the Chase empire is expanding. Chef Duke just opened the family's newest restaurant, Chapter Four. Being a fourth generation African-American restaurant tour is huge. Many generations now working side by side. Being around my family all day, that's the biggest blessing. I'm so grateful that I get to work with all my family and it's such a joy. And that joy, best expressed over great food. Hello, family. Hey, yes. Enjoying everything. We it's are great enjoying to everything. Good. What's the song that Rachel? I'm going down to Dookie to Chase to, to get, get myself my... some gumbo. When, when the service, service is right, they treat, treat you nice. nice. The whole restaurant, Dookie Chase's, is a, is a gift to the family that was given by my great grandparents. And so we want to make sure that, you know, the restaurant sustains that legacy and all the traditions. Leah Chase said, food bills, big bridges. If you can eat with someone, you can learn from them. And when you learn from someone, you can make big changes. We can change the course of America in this restaurant over a bowl of gumbo. We can talk to each other and relate to each other. When we eat together.
A trip to Harlem just wouldn't be complete without a meal here at Sylvia's Restaurant. This neighborhood institution has been serving up soul food since 1962. And what started as a small luncheonette has now become a family empire, beloved by tourists, locals, and plenty of famous faces. The cornbread was sweet, it was warm, and it just reminded me of home. It took me back to my grandmother's cooking, so I really enjoyed it. What brought me here today was that I was hungry and wanted some good soul food. So where do you go in Harlem? Sylvia's. Soul food is the cultural identity marker that really surmises our journey as a people living in America. Trinesse Woods Black is the granddaughter of the legendary queen of soul food, Sylvia Woods. Sylvia grew up in Hemingway, South Carolina, where she met her love, Herbert Woods, when they were 11 and 12. They fell in love picking beans after school. But this entrepreneur-to-be wasn't content with life on the farm. My grandmother, um, she came to New York when she was 16. She knew that this was a place that was more palatable for African Americans to like really live. Sylvia and Herbert were among the estimated six million African Americans who left the Jim Crow South during the Great Migration. They had came, you know, north to escape all of the atrocities that were happening and to really be in control of their lives. If you were black, you know, Harlem was the place to be. Sylvia finding work at a diner Johnson's Luncheonette, which she eventually purchased from the owner with a loan from her mom. Mr. Johnson knew that my grandmother would make it. And on August 1st, 1962, Sylvia's Restaurant was born. As the cultural center of black America, Harlem became a crucial site for demonstrations and organizing by leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X according to Professor Psyche Williams Forson. The heart of civil rights is America because it wasn't limited to one, one area. Though folks were in the North, they still experienced poverty and inequality and voter suppression and homelessness. Sylvia made the restaurant a welcoming place for activists. She played her role as ensuring that the community leaders had a place to, to meet and to commune and to strategize. Everyone dined at Sylvia's. Dizzy Gillespie, Ozzy Davis, Ruby Dee. You know, these are actors and actresses that were on the front line. By the 1960s, the movement had achieved major gains, like the historic Brown versus Board of Education and successful boycotts. But racial discrimination and police brutality against black Americans persisted, resulting in deadly riots throughout the decade. Two devastating events, just four years apart, sparked destructive riots throughout Harlem. But Sylvia's was always spared. Harlem was on fire, and my grandmother kept the restaurant open because the grocery stores were not open, nothing was open, you know, people couldn't feed their kids. And she was in that kitchen making food so that this community would have something to eat. This strong connection with Harlemites has continued for decades. We have guests that eat with us every single day. And sometimes we have people that eat with us multiple times a day. Coming up, I learned the secret to Sylvia's famous fried chicken.
Sylvia's in Harlem has been serving up soul food since 1962. And this native New Yorker couldn't wait to get back into their historic dining room. <laughs> oh, wow. it's, it's so, so good, good to see, see you. It's been so long. It's been mm. way too long. I've missed you. I've missed you too. But you know what? The good thing about Sylvia's is it's like I saw you yesterday. It's coming home. It's coming it's home. It's coming home. The dining room walls showcasing famous faces and political figures along with treasured memories. This picture is one of my grandmother's favorites. This was when Winnie and Nelson Mandela came to New York when he was freed. Eating here has become a rite of passage for many candidates. And there's a young man, I don't know whatever happened to this guy. You know, I think he might have turned out okay. I, I think, think so. He, yeah. After a meal here, After yeah. This is what sent him on his path. That's right. It's the, it was the chicken. It was the chicken. <laughs> but the heart of Sylvia's is Harlem. Triness and her family have worked hard to stay active in the neighborhood, from funding college scholarships for local teens to supporting Black Lives Matter events. What is it about this restaurant that keeps people coming back? Authenticity. Authenticity times love. Sylvia's, when you come to Sylvia's, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get some good food that's going to make you feel warm. Today, over a dozen family members help run Sylvia's empire, which includes a catering business and a successful food product line. What's it like working with family? Because I know your brother Marcus, yes. your baby brother Marcus, baby brother. is there in the kitchen. What's that like? Watching my brother throw down in the kitchen is something that we always knew was going to happen. Executive chef Marcus Woods has been at the helm for five years. Sylvia's grandson, it is so good to see you. Yeah. And you're back here, you're running the kitchen. What, what's that like for you? I mean, knowing that this legacy your grandmother's in. I'm honored, I'm honored. I still get to cook for people like you in the, the community of Harlem. So as long as I can do that, I'm happy. And always honored and blessed. You know, the amazing thing is food brings people together. You look in that, that, that dining room, everybody's there. Yes. Well, so, Sylvia used to always say that the first time you come to Sylvia's, you're a guest, the second time you're family. According to Marcus, fried chicken, the most beloved menu item. So, did your grandmother teach you how to do this? Yes, she taught me how to fry chicken, everything down to the seasoning. She would always say, you know, moisturize chicken and marinate it like you're putting lotion on a baby. Now, now I can't get that image out of my head exactly. now. One secret, Chef Marcus first applied a dry rub to marinate the chicken. Now is that just plain, plain flour? Yeah, this is plain flour. Uh -huh. We add a little coarse black pepper to it. Uh-huh. Drop them all in there. You just want to give it a little mix. Again, the baby metaphor. The baby metaphor. Like you're tossing the baby. After the chicken's coated, it gets a gentle shake. Then it's into the deep fryer. That looks like tender love and care right there. Oh, yeah. See how gently he's putting it in there. Putting the baby to bed. Yep, they'll let you know when they're ready to wake up. What's the best part of working here? That every day when I walk in, I get to feel like my grandmother's still with me. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like I feel her, I, I can really feel her presence in this place. And it reminds me, every time you're feeling a little lazy, it's like, all right, she's watching. <laughs> you better pick up, your, pick up the pace. And she treated everybody the same. Uh -huh. Celebrity, normal person, Worker, dishwasher, cook, chef. Yeah. I don't know if I can ever live up to who she was, but I'm going to. I'm gonna try. She was an amazing person. After about 15 minutes, golden perfection. Wow, that looks perfect. Now this now is you're where, a thigh person. This is, so I, I know what you're going person. for. Oh, I remember how good this is. That's perfect. Perfect. Wow, the seasoning, it's moist, crisp. Oh, your grandmother's smiling right now. That's Sylvia's fried chicken right there. You treated the baby well. Mm -hmm. Marcus, this is fantastic. It's so great to see you. Yeah. If, if, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take this piece to go. Oh, I'm gonna pack up a whole bunch for you. Thank you.
Welcome back. In Oakland, California, Lois the Pie Queen has been serving up Southern specialties, hospitality, and of course, fabulous pies since the 1950s. But it's more than just a space for delectable food. It's a well-known hub for political activists, artists, musicians, and everyday folks to meet, mix, and collaborate. Come on down to Lois the Pie Queen. Get your breakfast on and the mean green. Lois the Pie Queen is serving up much more than brunch staples. It's just a great place for locals to come, great place for people to connect. And it's just awesome that I could come to a place like this and have some soul food. My name is Chris Davis, and I'm owner of Lois the Pie Queen. We serve food that warms the soul. This family's roots run deep in Northern California. Lois Davis, Chris's mom, began selling homemade pies at her church in the 1940s. They were an instant hit. Her husband, Roland, dubbed her the Pie Queen and saw a new business opportunity. My dad was a chef at B&G Foods in San Francisco, and they combined both of their efforts to open up the restaurant and serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In 1953, the duo opening their Oakland restaurant. So my mother ran the restaurant for 40 years, and uh, it started at 4.30 in the morning for her and ended at 11 at night, and uh, she was a pure perfectionist. Lois perfecting recipes she enjoyed growing up. The recipes were my grandmother's recipes. My grandmother was from Texas, and they have maintained the test of time. All of the items that are on the menu were pretty much on the menu when my mom started the restaurant. From key lime pie topped with raspberry jam to banana cheesecake, sweet treats are always popular here. But there are plenty of savory staples that keep customers coming back every morning. And there's one dish with a special place in many folks' hearts. You might not find salmon croquettes on the menu anywhere in the Bay Area. The salmon croquettes are part salmon, part mackerel, yellow onions, salt and pepper, Italian breadcrumbs. These croquettes, which originated in the South, were a meal staple for many black families. Most black folks couldn't afford crab you know, once it became popularized. But in the absence of that, canned fish, salmon croquettes became a major filler. With a couple of cans, families could make an affordable yet delicious meal. Lois's dishes have brought in celebrities from Sammy Davis Jr. to Zendaya. And sports icons like Reggie Jackson ate here so often, they actually named a pork chop special after him. So here's my wall of fame and some of the special people that are up here. This is Black Panther Party Minister Eldridge Cleaver. All power to the people! In the 1960s and 70s, Lois welcomed members of the newly formed Black Panther Party. The restaurant is a short drive from Merritt Community College, where activists Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale first met, founding the party in 1966. Chris attended Merritt with both of them. I had Eldridge Cleaver, Angela Davis, Bobby Seale, and uh, Huey P. Newton come through the restaurant. Civil rights leaders and organizers and community leaders would come and meet and organize and strategize. There was a lot of uh, electricity in the restaurant uh, when they visited. The Black Panthers have a controversial legacy. The story we tend to hear is one of violence. What we don't hear about as much are the various lunch programs and, and free breakfast, of course. They saw black communities as in and of themselves resilient, capable of being self-sufficient. Lois and Chris were not members of the party, but it was during this era the restaurant became an important gathering space in the Oakland community for different walks of life. When people come and are needy and ask for food, we always do what my mom did, which was we always take care of them. We always give them a meal. The restaurant expanding this mission amid the pandemic, providing 16,000 meals to locals in need. It is a place for people to come and, uh, and get together and try and figure out how to make uh, our community and our world a better place. Today, that mission to help others has evolved. 
Chris uses his platform to support local musicians and keep the restaurant buzzy by bringing in younger generations. I believe that that aspect of music and musicianship is something that is in the ethos of the restaurant. Hey, Mr. Jackson, how are you? Good, I'm doing good, babe. Good to see you, man. Good. He recently started a music management company for Wise Men Entertainment that he unofficially runs from the tables at Lois. It's not an accident or a coincidence that you look around and see a lot of photographs of, you know, famous folks. There's a lot of people that he supports. And I don't mean support just by putting up pictures up. He'll cultivate young artists that are looking to get an opportunity to get a platform where they can be seen and heard. Would you like hash browns, grits, or rice? Grits, of course grits. Chris is determined to keep the restaurant in the family. His son, Corey Jackson, has been overseeing the day-to-day -day at Lois for nearly five years. Working with my dad gave me an understanding of not only the hard work my grandmother put forward and how much my dad is trying to fill those shoes, and now I'm trying to fill his. Corey hoping his sons will share the passion for the family business. They can't stay away. They have a job right now. They fold silverware. It's great to see my kids and their Papa Chris bond in those times. Chris thinks Lois would be incredibly proud to see her restaurant continuing to thrive. We are the oldest black restaurant in the Bay Area. It is a tribute to my mom's efforts to support her community and to create a place that was a home away from home and a place that served food that warmed the soul. Say cheesecake. Cheesecake. <laughs> As you might imagine, keeping a restaurant running for decades is no easy feat, especially in the face of adversity. But with delicious dishes and unwavering hospitality, these historic hotspots have nourished generations fighting for social change. These places now stand as symbols of resilience, inspiring and feeding a new generation of community leaders. Good morning, guys. Welcome to The Boost. It is National Self-Care Day. From running to reading to relaxation, we got all the practices that can boost your mood and leave us all feeling good. And today, we are sharing stories that emphasize the importance of taking time for yourself, like our first story. Jen and I recently played a visit to The Well. It's a destination for wellness and healing. It's right in the heart of Manhattan. And we had a lesson in slowing down and making space for ourselves. And we learned some healing techniques that you can use at home. Hey guys! We adore our jobs in the business, but it takes a lot of energy to have this much fun every morning. Hey! Hi! Boom! Throw it! Oh, no. And with five kids between us, the pace only picks up once we get home from work. So, we were given an important assignment to make a little space for ourselves. Let's slow down. Slow. Where are we racing to? We're Nowhere. Not, we're not racing. We're gonna go anywhere. slow. Anywhere. Look, the well. It seems like the right place. Well, let's, let's go. go. This is the well in New York City, designed to be a one-stop shop for all things wellness. It's so important to create spaces where people can have time for themselves, you know, offer a wide range of, of options and tools where people can help navigate all the different things that they're juggling in their day-to-day -day lives. They also take a holistic approach to health. We're looking at all aspects of someone's health, the physical, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional. We're not just taking a symptom and looking for a drug that fits that symptom. Today, our prescription was to be bathed in a symphony of sounds. And our mind coach, Manjeet Devgan, she uses her voice and her instruments to send healing energy to the body. I grew up singing on stage in the temple, so I had a very spiritual upbringing. So I'm going to take them through a little bit of sound bath so that they can feel how relaxing the instruments are on them, send them a little bit of energy healing, fill them with light. I'm so excited that you're here. Welcome to the well. Oh, we feel your vibe. I want to invite you to 
Lie down. And are you okay with me touching your heart and your yes, shoulders and touch your head? Wherever. Okay. Yeah, blankets just to be cozy. You girls look so cute in your pink. We pinks. match. And let's begin. The sound of Manjeet's singing. Combined with the vibrations of the drums and the singing bowls, put us in a completely calm state and left our bodies tingling. Last time, take a deep breath in and then exhale all the way out. Oh my God, that was really good. I mean, that was awesome. Awesome. I loved it. I don't want it to be over. This is the first time I've done a shoot like this or anything yeah. similar to this where you forgot. I forgot. Oh, that's good. That never happens. Our next stop, a manifesting hypnosis. You get to mentally rehearse what it's like to have already completed 2023 with the three things that you want to bring in. So I'm gonna guide you through this. Okay. Wow. Which Manjeet says will open up our subconscious. Imagine that next natural exhale flowing from the top of your head like a beautiful waterfall down the length of your body. And help change our old habits into what she calls new programming. And then on a TV screen, I want you to envision the first goal, the first wish that you want to complete at the end of December 2023 knowing that the brain waves are slowing down and allowing you to have mental rehearsal of everything that you're experiencing. Wow. You know, it's weird. I felt like I was in like a trancey state and then you said you're gonna be refreshed or whatever and I feel totally too. refreshed. That's yeah. very strange. <laughs> so it's great that you're in the trancey state. That's what we want. So where are we seeing ourselves at the end of 2023? So this is sort of hard to even explain, but it was something about the way I want my house to feel, mm -hmm. the way I want my, like, the energy uh, that I have towards those that I love. I actually had a vision of, like, my family from, like, 30,000 feet, but it was evolving. Mm. Like, that's what I was seeing, and I was like, I didn't know I was thinking about that or manifesting or even thinking about that. Coming up next, this running program is helping young athletes in Philly make strides. They're building physical and mental strength with the help of our sponsor, Brooks. Take a look. In the hallways of schools across Philadelphia, one uniform stands out. You ready for the five care races? But these aren't your average varsity jackets. These blue shirts and sweaters are worn by students who have run a half or full marathon. All thanks to a local nonprofit, Students Run Philly Style. They get their hoodies and they get to have that moment where they go, yes, I accomplished something big. The kid I ran the marathon with this year wore that hoodie to school for the entire next week. It's a passion project for running coach Jeremy Spry, who serves as a program manager for a local high school and volunteers with the organization. I look for students who may not see themselves as traditional athletes, who know they want something to be a part of a team. Students Run Philly Style provides each student with free shoes, gear, and training to help build their physical and mental stamina and reach more personal goals. Students like 10th grader Willis Osorio. What made you want to start? When I was younger, I was like really scared of showing myself in like athletic events. In gym class, I'd always like hide in a corner. It was through Students Run that got me into physical activity. His classmate Gus Wood felt the same way. I moved to a new middle school and uh, I was very shy and I wouldn't really talk to people. I'm a lot better at making new relationships, making new friends because of running. A goal at the heart of the program, providing a safe and inclusive space for students. It's not necessarily rewarding somebody for being the fastest. It's our jobs to celebrate each other. It's our jobs to make sure that no one gets left behind. And so having that teamwork, having that family is just so, so important. Marathoners Brissa de la Cruz Tadeo, a high school senior, and Chris Zhang, a sophomore, are both part of one of the LGBTQ plus chapters of the organization. I used to be like a really insecure person. After I started running, I started to focus on 
myself and my own improvement. Being in that space is really helpful in building up my confidence and like being more open and out, just like unapologetically. I really don't see students run as a sport. I feel like it's more of a lifestyle. We're fortunate enough to have a program where we're seen and valued. Students Run Philly Style currently has 55 chapters and reaches 1,000 kids, making a big impact. 41% of students have increased their GPA and 91% of 12th graders graduated high school. All right, go ahead. We invited runners from chapters across Philly to come together to a special practice. Go Students Run Philly Style! Woo! With a big surprise at the finish line. On the count of three, we're gonna lift this up, okay? One, two, three! Woo Our sponsor, Brooks Running, is donating over 150 pairs of shoes to Students Run Philly Style, and you're all getting a brand new pair! And as part of their ongoing commitment to supporting young runners, and running groups across the country, our sponsor, Brooks Running, is donating $10,000 to Students Run Philly what? Style. That is so awesome! Yeah. Woo. That How is does that make you feel? So amazing. That money will go so far for all of these kids and for so many more kids in Philadelphia. Students Run Philly Style, are we ready to run? Yeah. Coming up, meet the woman who left Wall Street for a farm. Coming up after the break. Welcome back to The Boost. Our next story encourages us to all open up by cutting out the chit chat and getting straight to deeper conversations. And it's proving that big things can happen when we skip the small stuff. Savannah Sellers has that story. I think I just assumed that the reason people walk around the world not opening up is because they don't want to. When in reality, I think I keep learning that people are willing to, but they're just looking for the right space to feel safe enough to do it. Psychologist Ashley Kersner decided to make the space for it. I started to think of Skip the Small Talk as almost like a vulnerability gym where you can sort of work on your vulnerability muscles so that the next time you do it, it's not as difficult. We are at an event called Skip the Small Talk. So we will be skipping the small talk. Six years ago, Ashley, a research assistant at the time, conducted her own social experiment in Boston, wondering what would happen if she brought together people who all opted in to being honest and candid. It was supposed to be a three hour long event. I had to kick people out after seven hours. Um, it was just so beyond anything I could have ever imagined. What made you interested in this and in getting people to get deeper and explore their vulnerability um, what was it that interested you about this line of work? I was actually volunteering at a suicide hotline and I noticed that regardless of what people were calling in about, that people didn't really feel comfortable talking about the meaningful, difficult stuff with the people they had in their lives. So they were happy to spill their guts to a stranger, but they weren't really open to doing that to their partners, their family, their friends. 
Since then, Skip the Small Talk turned into a regular event, expanding to about a dozen cities and has even gone international with a gathering in Paris. Participants arrive knowing no one, then speak with a stranger for 10 minutes before rotating, answering prompts on cards with questions like, in what ways are you different from the person you were five years ago, and in what ways are you the same? I like it because it sort of gives you information about somebody's like journey. Another one I really like is uh, describe yourself uh, from the perspective of someone who cares about you. Mm. That's one where um, I've definitely seen some teary eyes happen uh, every so often. Tell me about some of the relationships that have blossomed out of Skip to Small Talk. I got a housewarming invitation from a couple that had met at Skip the Small Talk and they were just moving in together. I actually found a roommate through Skip the Small Talk. For participants, the process becomes transformative. I feel very happy that I did this because I got out of my comfort zone and I did something that I don't normally do. And that feeling is invigorating. It feels like I'm being my own person. I think it's amazing that you can just find somebody who looks different from you, who understands what you're going through, and I think people really take that with them. All right, Ashley, you know what? I think we're at that point, so I'm going to ask you, can you describe yourself to me from the perspective of someone who cares about you? I don't know why I wasn't expecting this, but <laughs> yes, let's do this. Oh, boy. Let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. I'm in. I'm getting teary-eyed. All right, all right, all right. I would say from the perspective of uh, my best friend, Meg, I think she sees me as courageous, and she sees me as fun, and someone who's like willing to take risks to do cool things in the world. Yeah, I get a little, get a little teary about it. <laughs> well, she's right. You are doing such cool things in the world. Thank I mean, you this is so amazing. Much. There's no better way to show you care than with flowers. And next up, we are sharing the story of a flower farm in Massachusetts. It started as one woman's seed of an idea, and thanks to her loved ones, it's grown into something very special. Flowers, to me, it just makes people happy. It's food for the soul. Tucked away in the woods of Upton, Massachusetts, is a childhood dream come true. In elementary school, when the teacher would ask, like, draw a picture of your dream job. And I drew myself picking strawberries. In a way, I knew I really, really, really wanted to farm. That's a monster bushes over here. Grace Lamb and her employees are up with the morning dew, picking, priming, and packing dahlias, the farm's signature flower. It's becoming a jungle in here. I think we're growing 240 varieties but there's... Drop in the bucket. Yeah, that's nothing compared to how many dahlias are out there in the universe. It's a love for tending plants cultivated at a young age in a multi-generational immigrant family. I was the one that really enjoyed helping my mom and my grandma out in the garden. That early farming fantasy was lost to the realities of adulthood. Grace went to school for finance and took a lucrative job on Wall Street. I was a equities sales trader. Just didn't fulfill me deep inside. So after four years, when Grace's team was downsized. I was out of my apartment in two weeks and I found a job at a farm. I think we all knew deep down that Grace's place was out here in the dirt. From day one, the farm was a family affair. Grace's brother, Lee, joined her full time. Duped. Yeah. Totally duped. Well, he's always really good at building things. He was actually the sucker, the easiest one to get. <laughs> Five Fork Farms blossomed with the help of her four older siblings and parents. Grace went from her mother's backyard to 38 acres. I don't think Five Fork would have worked at least in this iteration, if it wasn't our family. The inn is on the right. Grace's father is a fan favorite at the farm, delivering flowers and ushering customers to their farm stand. He sees the business as an opportunity he never got growing up in Cambodia. My wife and I, we grew up having little family life because of our parents have to make livings. We absolutely don't want our children to live the life like we did. Ten years later, the farm is thriving. 
Their loyal customer base that's turned into family makes sure the flowers sell out every year. I would say that's what keeps us going. For sure. The joy and happiness that they bring to people's lives. I need to make sure they have that. The family grows the most amazing flowers I've ever seen in my life. It's like an outing for the kids, beautiful flowers for mom. The weather has proven to be an unruly and unpredictable business partner, forcing the lambs to adapt. We've had some sort of weather-related record every season so far. This season in particular, the major drought. And heat. Total 180 from last year. Despite Mother Nature, Grace is still planting her roots. How many times have I quit? Quits about once a year, at least. <laughs> With her family joining every step of the way. It doesn't seem, at least to me, like work. You just keep on going. We got more stories to put a smile on your face coming up right after the break. back to the boost it's time to meet twin brothers in North Carolina making people smile with their dance moves on social media they have become TikTok sensations at 75 years old and you're about to see why I'm Wayne and you're Dwayne no I'm Wayne and you're Dwayne we're, we're the, the hangline twins, twins from, from TikTok, TikTok. There's a lot more than meets the eye when it comes to the 75-year-old Hainline twins. They're dump truck drivers, they're U.S. Army veterans, left, right, left, right. and they're also viral TikTok stars. My daughter Julie asked me to do some TikTok videos with her, and I said, what is TikTok? <laughs> what do you mean? We put him in one of my videos and it instantly went viral. Everybody was like, bring your dad back. Your dad needs to have his own account. So fast forward, we got Uncle Dwayne on board. But you got dragged. <laughs> yeah, we sure pulled him in here. Their videos have exploded. The Hainline twins have over 1.5 million followers and hundreds of millions of views across their videos. I may be on TikTok for an hour looking for trends or looking for something someone's done that's easy to do that we could do. Boy, some of those people, <laughs> they can do stuff. We could never jump up and down, flip and turn us no, down. We can't do them. But for Wayne and Dwayne, this is much more than just social fame. We must be doing something right. The joy that we bring people. I love you guys. I mean, just this comment after comment after comment. I'm still scratching my head trying to figure out you know, what, what this is all about. Fly to the right. Some of their Chris. biggest fans are their brother's own family. They've taught me how to be a great human being, and then they're showing that on TikTok. 
no matter how old you are, that you can still have fun just to choose kindness. They just have a love for people. In any way that they can share that love to others, uh, they do it. Wayne and Dwayne have been doing life together since the day they were born on November 4th, 1947. Wayne has always been my best friend, no doubt. We do Sometimes things. you just finish each other's sentence, you know, and you're like, then. Oh, really? <laughs> and this isn't their first foray into the spotlight. When they were in their teens, they started a band called the Ardells and recorded a single called Drag Race. We decided we were going to play rock and roll. In 1963, we cut a record. The Dixie Cups from New York came down. They did Chapel of Love, going to the chapel, and we got to be the actual band for five shows with them. Now, 60 years later, this dynamic duo is still finding ways to entertain a brand new generation of people. My youngest son, he says, Dad, ever since you've been a kid, you've been a showman, so you're, this is just your old showman a state of life. <laughs> Instead of being 16, we're 75. <laughs> okay, that's an antique comedian. That's what we are. <laughs> and all the comments that we get from stuff that we do indicate that we're, we're helping people. It, it inspires me it's to be able to, yeah. to do stuff for people that will lift them up. Oh my yes. gosh, and we're so happy because the Hayline so twins, Dwayne and Wayne are here. Y'all, what is having a twin meant for your life? I know it's meant everything for mine. Y'all always got a buddy. Yeah. No, I have, yeah. I have a friend, got your back. It's great. It's great. I mean, being TikTok stars, y'all, at age 75, <laughs> I mean, this is something. What does it feel like when people do come up to you and say, you know what, I was having the worst day. I clicked on your video and wow. We get that a lot in comments and people live also. A lady came up to us once and uh, was a Dollar General and said, you know, don't quit what you're doing because God is using you. I had breast cancer and I watched your uh, video oh. clips while uh, recovering from that. And she said it just brought me through uh, a great time. Oh. So, it was, uh, Wayne, it was when great. you hear that, yep, it just uh, it it's worth it's worth everything. You know, it, that's what it's all about. Sharing it's payday. Yeah. yeah, that's payday. And uh, sharing your love that uh, Christ gives you, sharing that love with everybody else, you know. Y'all are musicians from the start, though. I mean, yes, you, you sang, you have your record, you know the Dixie Cups. Like, this is very, <laughs> very cool. Do you like, like, getting that musical part back out there for the world to see? Yes, uh, and it's, it's self-fulfilling also, you know. We really together. haven't uh, pushed our music too much. We've yes. got some stuff that we really want to uh, get out there. So, okay, wait, uh, when y'all perform oh. your new album, will y'all come yeah. here? Can we do the international twin symbol <laughs> one? Lock it up. <laughs> Lock, it Lock it up. up. Jenna made that up. I made that, it up. Yeah, All right. Well, can right. we, Ready. is it okay for can you to show, show us some of your moves? Why don't you do the moves? Well, well sure. First. Okay. Oh, okay. boy, this is going to be wonderful. Okay. Here now. Moscow. Okay. Music, please. Do this by ourselves. Y'all need to come up okay, and help us out. Okay, you'll be right here. Okay, okay. okay. Tell us how we and, do it. Okay, right here. Okay. So, so yes, okay. the first thing you do, yeah. when you hear the music, okay. it goes. Hey. So, right, you just right foot, right foot, right, 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 and then turn, and turn. Go. Nobody's going to slow me down. Nobody's going to slow. Here we go. Now we're going to move forward okay. with the right foot, right, right foot back. Oh no! Right, left, skip, right, 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 skip, left. How do you know? I like the I like the yo. Y'all are amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you for lighting up the world. You know what? Twins are the best. Coming up, the latest viral video that's going to put a smile on your face. Stay with us.
the Boost, we have one more video sure to leave you with a smile. Take a look. A bunch of friends vacationing in Europe, they got tired of trying to find somebody to take group pictures of them when they hit all the tourist spots. So then they had a great idea. They were going to train their dog to do it. Wait, they put the phone in Dixie's mouth, put the timer on, they crouched down, and guess what? No way. Yeah. Look how the photos turned out. Whoa. Not, Not so bad, Dixie. No. I mean, look. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is that crazy? That's pretty funny. They got good shots. Wow, those yeah. are getting better. All right, the dog's an, an artist. Oh and my gosh, very look at our headline, photographer. Oh. 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 That's our time. We hope this show inspired you, and we hope you do something special for yourself today. We'll be back with you tomorrow for more of our favorite feel-good stories. We'll see you next time here on Today All Day. Good morning, welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. And thanks for joining us for another episode of Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. As consumers deal with high inflation, we're continuing to help you save money while dining out to cutting costs at the grocery store. But first, we are all thinking about our next vacation. So how can you find the best spring travel deals? Spring is in the air, and after years of missing out, college students and families are making spring break a priority this season with hotspots in Florida, the Southwest, and south of the border at the top of the list, according to travel booking site Hopper. If you're headed to a very popular warm weather spring break destination, you should be booking your flight now. Travel costs are not immune to inflation. Hotel rates are up 64% from last year, and flights cost 20% more. But there are spring break deals out there. Hopper advertising $82 round-trip flights to Orlando from New York, Boston to San Diego for $190, and Newark round trip to Turks and Caicos for $260. But the clock is ticking. Families heading to vacation hotspots should book as soon as possible. Prices might rise by more than $200 a ticket in the weeks closer to spring break. Expect full flights and hotels and make contingency plans in case of flight cancellations. For budget-conscious travelers, be flexible. Midweek flights can be up to $100 cheaper per person. Wait to book big city hotels. Last minute room deals can save you up to 25% and consider a staycation. One of the best ways to get an incredible deal when you do a staycation is to reach out to local hotels or accommodation providers. Ask if they have a geofenced rate. Hotels often will offer a lower rate to residents of the town, the community, sometimes even the state to incentivize locals to stay at their accommodations. Meanwhile, international travel has also roared back with Asian destinations like China, Japan and Indonesia reopening post-pandemic and attracting crowds of young people eager to experience a new part of the world and take advantage of the strong dollar. When you add up hotel, eating out, Ubers to and from airports, the total amount of money you're spending to go somewhere in the U.S. might actually be the same amount you would spend going somewhere in Asia or Europe. Savvy travelers should plan out a complete budget, including the cost of taxis, rental cars, food and drink, and excursions. Tips to maximize your spring break without breaking the bank. If you're thinking about hitting the open seas, cruise lines are offering some big savings right now. Roller coasters, go-kart racing, water parks, not on land, but at sea. And with several new ships arriving this year, cruises can be found at all price points like this three-night cruise in the Bahamas for under 300 bucks per person. 
or a seven-night voyage for two on the Mediterranean for $2,900. As travel restrictions ease, families are ready to hit the high seas. Well, I think there was an appetite for people who really wanted to travel and really weren't doing it during the pandemic. Colleen McDaniel is the editor-in-chief of CruiseCritic.com. Why is cruising back in such a big way? Cruising is bringing new ships. They are loaded with amenities and things to do. Activities like go-kart racing or rock wall climbing, all these cool things that you can do ashore, you can now do on a cruise ship. Just how big is this wave of reservations? Celebrity Cruises had its largest booking day ever on Black Friday. Holland America up 20% from 2019. And Royal Caribbean had its biggest booking day in the company's 53-year history. Among the most popular destinations, Alaska and Northern Europe's British Isles, Greenland and Iceland. McDaniel says start by working with a travel agent, especially if you've never cruised before. And don't pick based on price. Tell the agent what you want to do. Pricing will be a part of it, but it shouldn't be the biggest factor because if you don't have that great ship, you're not going to have the perfect experience. If you're booking the cruise yourself, look for discounted gift cards on websites like Raise or CardCash.com. We found this one a $500 value for $430. If you apply several gift cards to your purchase, the savings really add up. <laughs> So how do you make the most of your experience and save money once you're on board the ship? Well, to show you, I'm here on The Gem by Norwegian Cruise Lines. And with me, Stephanie Cardell. She's the director of communications. So, Steph, what should folks think about once they set foot on board? Sure. There's so much to do on board. Everybody loves to dine and eat when they're on board the ship. So make sure you go down and you get your specialty dining package if you haven't done so yet. Same with your unlimited beverage package. You know, if you want to spend days around the pool um, having your favorite cocktail, make sure to do that first. And those packages tend to save you more money than if you bought Lala carte. Absolutely. And then you have some tips on saving on the rooms too. Yep. Let's go check those out. Great. So Steph, what do you need to think about when it comes to accommodations if you're on a budget? It really depends what type of traveler you are, right? Or if you're traveling solo, we have studio staterooms, right? So they're designed and priced for the solo traveler. If you're looking to just spend um, more of your time outside, enjoying the pool deck, enjoying the bars, the entertainment, then an inside stateroom might be for you. Or if you're looking to spread out in more luxurious accommodations or if you have a large family, something like this, the three bedroom Haven Villa, might be a great option for you. And you can split the cost if you're traveling with another couple or some other friends. Absolutely. It's like having your apartment out at sea. Thank you. My pleasure. The cost of drinks can really add up on a cruise, but check out cruiselead.com. They have a drink calculator that can help you figure out which drink package to save you the most money. However you vacation, grab some me time. The best time to save on the spa when the ship is docked. You have a secret tip for saving at the spa. What's that? So on port days, there's always a special. So keep an eye out. You'll get a notice in your room, and it'll tell you what that special is for the port. And the better deals are as the cruise is getting closer to its end. Up next, sharing a home share. From planning to safety, what to figure out before your next dream vacation so it doesn't turn into a nightmare. And later, what you need to know about new subscription services at popular restaurants. That's all ahead on Consumer Confidential.
Welcome back to Consumer Confidential. It's become an alternative to hotels and resorts renting a vacation home. And it could be a good way to save money. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to finding the perfect vacation home for your next trip. Need an escape from the daily grind? For your next family vacation, you could relax by the pool at this home in Port St. Lucie, Florida for $333 a night. Or watch the sunrise at this oceanfront condo in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for $507 a night. Or enjoy the view from the hot tub at this luxury chalet in Steamboat Springs, Colorado for $1325 a night. These rentals all big enough to share with another family. It's a popular travel trend as many look to give their wallets a break this spring. The average family of four now spends more than $4,500 on a vacation each year. But by buddying up at a home share, you can split the cost with others, saving you money while making priceless memories. Last year, Airbnb reporting family travel nearly doubled to 98% in the U.S. alone. And a recent Verbo survey finding this year, 57% of travelers plan to take trips more often with groups of friends. To rent a big, huge, you know, three-floor house or cabin would have not made financial sense. So splitting it with a family was perfect. Karen Ensley, her husband Will, and their daughter Sienna escaped to the great outdoors with some friends in the Pocono Mountains. After discussing their budgets, the two families searched Airbnb to find a spacious cabin within their price range. We wanted to make sure we had enough space so that the two families could be together but separate. Ensley says they took in the sights and the savings, as the outdoor toys included with the rental provided entertainment. The families also split the grocery bill. It ends up being cheaper than a hotel. But when vacationing, the phrase, the more the merrier, doesn't always apply. Travel preparedness expert Cheryl Nelson says before booking a shared space, discussing the details can help ensure everyone goes and comes back as friends. What about if you're traveling with another family on a shared vacation? What are some tips to make it out of that <laughs> intact? There's got to be some house rules that you set. Are there quiet hours? Agree on that. What about pets? Don't bring your dog if somebody else is bringing their cat. And kids, how are the kids going to play? Talk about the budget, how much space you need, and if you want to split the cost per family or per person. Nelson even suggests assigning rooms ahead of time. A lot of the times there's only one, maybe two master suites in the house. You don't want everybody fighting over that when they get there. Other topics to consider, how to split food costs, how much time to spend together and apart, sleep habits, and as Ensley learned, who does the chores? If one family's cooking, maybe the other one cleans that day and, and you kind of switch back and forth. When considering a home rental, Nelson says make safety a priority. Only rent from verified hosts. Read all the reviews about that property. You can also check out the surrounding area by entering the address on a street view map. And one more tip, you can see the recent serious crimes there if you put the address into crimemapping.com. What are some red flags you should look for in a listing? If they don't provide any sort of picture of a doorway or external pictures, that might raise a red flag. Nelson shows us her first safety check. Does the rental have a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide alarm? You can also bring your own. This one's portable. All you do is plug it into the wall. She then uses a flashlight to look for hidden cameras. Ideally, I'd close the blinds, lights would be off. And as I'm lounging, I would just start pointing this at vents. If you see anything reflecting back at you, there might be a hidden camera in there. And she checks drawers for sharp objects and drugs or chemicals. Tips to keep your home share travels full of good, clean family fun. Still to come, how to avoid paying extra airline fees and later, deal or no deal, how to find the best prices at your grocery store. We're back after this.
Welcome back. Consumers are already battling inflation, and now it seems we're also seeing more of those so-called junk fees charged by airlines. NBC's Tom Costello spoke to our friends on the Today Show about a new policy that could make flying cheaper. It's a travel hassle familiar to any family traveling with kids. Either shell out the extra cash for seat selections up front or try to wing it at the gate. Now United Airlines is rolling out a new seating policy to make the skies a bit friendlier, allowing accompanying parents and adults to sit next to children younger than 12 without paying extra. That's a big deal for parents like Nathan Herrig and his family of four. It takes away one of the most stressful parts of flying, which is, you know, uh, what am I going to do with my kids on the flight? Along with the ticketing policy, United says it's also unveiling new technology that will open up more seats on its flights to help automatically keep younger children next to an adult in their party, giving access to regular economy seats and preferred seats if needed. No extra fee. It's not uncommon to see seat selection as much as 50, 60 or $70 per person. And so if you're talking about a family of four, that can run well over $200 just to reserve your specific seat. The new feature will be available to families purchasing either regular tickets or basic economy tickets, which typically have more restrictions. The move comes as regulators, lawmakers, and the White House have taken sharp aim at so-called junk fees that airlines charge. We'll prohibit airlines from charging $50 round trip for family just to be able to sit together. Baggage fees are bad enough. Airlines can't treat your child like a piece of baggage. The airline industry says carriers try to seat families together, often at the gate, but families sometimes buy seats together that cost more. Experts say United's new boarding tool should remove some of the boarding stress for families. It's going to be better for uh, airline gate agents who don't have to try to play musical chairs. All right, Tom, some good tips, but if families are booking with other airlines outside of United, how can they avoid that CD yeah. fee? Yeah, let's walk through a couple of tips for you. Uh, first of all, you should try to call the airline in advance. If you're going ahead and booking online, First of all, try to see if you can book together. That may be difficult, but give it a shot. Call the airline in advance, explain to them you're traveling with young kids, and if that doesn't work or if they simply can't help you, the agent at the gate, hopefully, at the airport can help you as well. And here's a good tip. If you're traveling with kids, try to choose maybe a seat, all seats in the back of the plane. Those usually don't fill up as fast, and usually those are not premium seats. It's easier to get seats together. Closer to the bathroom, yeah, too, by the way. Yeah. Prox, in that case, with little kids, not a bad thing. How about baggage fees? Because those can really add up, too, Tom. Well, you know, if you have status, if you fly a lot, usually your status will allow you to check a bag for free. But those airline credit cards usually will give you at least one, sometimes two bags for free. So consider that using a credit card for the airline that you're on. Also compare the policies. Not all airlines charge to check bags. Southwest still does not. So you might want to be looking and considering whether that's a factor. And then if you want to try to avoid that checking the bag fee, you might want to try to carry on and then check the bag at the gate. However, your bag can't be so big it doesn't fit through the TSA x-ray machine. It's not just airlines that are tacking on those fees, hotels, concerts, even banks too. So how can we avoid extra fees? NBC's business reporter Brian Chung recently shared some ways to cut down on costs. All right, so we're going to take it one step at a time by the by the numbers. Let's start with those dreaded banking fees. What are we working with here? Yeah, well, it costs a lot to use plastic Chanel. And the number I've got for you here is $29.80. Okay. That number comes from bank rate. That's how much it costs to overdraft. You don't have enough money in your checking account. The bank has to move from your savings account, and that's going to cost you a lot of money. So that make sure up. you have enough in your checking account. Yeah, but look, yeah. there's a lot of other fees that are associated with using bank services as well. Okay. ATM fees, $4.66. Per what? Per transaction. That's also according to bank rate. So if you want to avoid that, try to stay inside your debit card network. Take a look at the back of the plastic to make okay. sure you know where to use it. And then there's also credit card late fees, right? <laughs> On top of the interest that you're going to pay for anything that's overdue, you're also yep. going to get this late fee of about $30. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is actually proposing under the Biden administration to cap that at $8. Really? And, yep, and the CFPB, again, it's a proposal right now, okay. but they say that could save Americans about $9 billion. And by the way, Chanel, for all these fees, if you do face it, try to give your bank a call. Just say, hey, look, I'm really sorry about that. Maybe can you waive it? I've done it before with the overdraft Right, especially fee. if it's just one time. Exactly. And yeah, the worst you... they could do, 
say no. Say no. Yep, okay, exactly. save that money. All right, next, let's talk about, this is a good one, the extra costs yes. we pay for cable yeah. and internet. <laughs> yeah, really expensive. And, and the number I've got for you right here is 11.3%. That's the estimated inflation that we've seen just since the beginning of the pandemic for your cable fees. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's on top of what Consumer Reports estimated was $450 in yearly cable fees that people are paying. So fees, and not just wow. the... Just well, the, that is actually the bill, but oh, it that's includes the bill. fees, which okay. I'm going to get to right here. Company imposed fees as part of that are about 24%, according to uh, mm -hmm. Consumer Reports. But I feel now, like it feel, you feel helpless. Like, you get the bill and you have all those fees on there. What are you supposed to do? Well, you, you, I mean, you can call the cable company and try to yeah. see if you can negotiate some of those fees. But there are things like, for example, modem rentals. They'll okay. say, you have to rent from us. That could be up to $15 a month. You could buy your own modem, your own router mm -hmm. from Best Buy, for example, and yeah. then save yourself the monthly fee. Okay. And also watch out for cancellation fees. If you try to get out of a contract early, could be up to $200. But again, try to give your cable company a call. And also maybe consider cutting the cord if it's going to save you money just by streaming instead of buying a cable. But those streaming, those streaming services have all been Start jacking up. Yeah, all yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you got to do the math and try to see based off of what channels you want whether or not it ends up working out. All right. It's crazy. All right, so if you actually get off the couch <laughs> yep. and leave the house, we all want to do experiences. There's concerts, there's games, but the fees attached to ticketing is yep. also up. Dylan, so the number I've got for you is 27 to 31%. That's the average ticket fee. This is where we feel a lot of the pain. Mm -hmm. A lot of T-Swift fans will know this <laughs> as well, right? Now, let's do the math, right? Average concert ticket, according to uh, Polestar, is $108.20. So with another fee on top of that, mm -hmm. that's going to be another $30 just right. to get into the stadium. Average NBA game, I'm a huge Brooklyn Nets fan. I know this for a fact. $94, but again, the fees are mm -hmm. added on top of that. It's very expensive just to get inside the Barclays Arena. And then the average discount theater tickets, this is according to Today Ticks Group. They're saying it's about $55. That's not just Broadway, that's nationally, mm -hmm. by the way. Again, you're going to face fees on top of that. There's so, no, what can you do for that? Well, one thing you can do is you can try to go directly to the box office. In many cases, you can get around these third-party ticket mm -hmm. resellers to get around the fee. And then also remember that you can actually try to join a fan club, for example. Okay. They might offer discounted tickets. Oh, that's a good idea. Well. Oh, it ticks yeah. me off is when you you go and you buy your movie ticket online and they charge you a convenience yes. fee? Yeah, convenience fee. <laughs> What's up with what? that? What's so convenient yeah, about you're, that right you're, now? <laughs> you have fewer cashiers because I'm buying online. Stop it! <laughs> anyway, uh, travel fees. Yes, yes. What's the number? Well, there? look, I get worked up just as much about travel fees as well. 30 to $35, that is the average airfare fees just for trying to pick your seat, just mm -hmm. to try to check your bags. Right. Things you can get around, try to check the bag maybe directly at the gate. I've got other numbers for you as well. Airport car rentals, another 23% more expensive to rent at the airport. Yeah. Oh, wow. Consider taking an Uber into a downtown location. Uh -huh. Renting from the same place mm -hmm. could be a lot cheaper. Resort fees, $40 just can for Can you that. negotiate those? Eh, it's kind of tough, but the Biden administration is looking at perhaps Mm -hmm. nixing these fees and then airbnbs this is where it gets i mean everyone's experiencing mm -hmm. this 14.2 percent could be the fees on top of what you're quoted wow. yeah. check the card try to check out so you get a mm -hmm. final mm -hmm. invoice and how much that's going to cost Brian you Chung, great it's good advice Thanks so it much yep. coming up how to stretch your dollars at the grocery store plus what you need to know about new subscription services at popular restaurants <laughs>
With more Americans turning to discount stores to cope with high food prices, many traditional grocery stores are trying to lure back customers by pushing their own store brands and expanding loyalty programs. Here's how you can find the best deals. In aisles all across America, grocery shoppers are doing a double take. That's not even a cart full of groceries. As inflation sent food prices soaring, now more than half of all Americans, a whopping 60 percent, prefer non-traditional stores. Wholesale clubs like Costco or super centers such as Target and Walmart are often the go-to destination for food shoppers. That's causing a shuffle on the shelves. Some retailers to stay competitive for consumers are going to put items that are staple items on sale. They're also upping rewards on loyalty programs. As the grocery wars heat up, traditional chains like Kroger are leaning into their ability to provide fresh produce and relying on reputation to establish their own brand loyalty. What we find is uh, customers going from national brand to our brands and a customer is able to save seven to 10 percent on a basket of goods when they buy our brands. They're also leaning into digital coupons, a big hit with shoppers. For us, our business model is designed to be successful regardless of the environment. The changing landscape can mean good news at the checkout. Stores like Aldi, which continue to expand, entice customers with cheap prices on popular brands. I think the prices are really good and they have a lot of good options. And I really like the frozen food section. I save about $100 at least a month. Discount stores are making a deep dent too. I spent $35 on a week's worth of groceries at Dollar Tree. With one in five people shopping for groceries at Dollar Chains. They want you to see that they have the exact same quality of a name brand for much less. And often you'll see a comparison between the two prices, two big stickers right next to each other. Retailers like Dollar Tree are even remodeling some stores to showcase groceries and kitchen staples and partnering with delivery app Instacart to reach new customers. With so many choices, if you want to keep your grocery budget in check, experts suggest jump on those buy one, get one offers for your essential goods and freeze what you don't use. Set up a meal plan for the week to limit overspending. And don't forget to take advantage of those loyalty programs that can cut costs in line. Take a beat before you go to the grocery store and really do the research. You will be so surprised how much money you can save. Now to a closer look at big changes happening in the food industry. Some restaurants are offering deals like subscription services and extra perks to keep customers coming back. NBC's Kaylee Hartung has the latest. From chicken to beef to eggs, the price you pay for food at the grocery store remains high. And restaurants, big and small, are feeling that same sting from inflation. Food is getting outrageous. Many businesses have been forced to pass on those costs to consumers, making the price you pay for dine-in and takeout meals more expensive. 8% more than you paid for the same meals last year. That ballooning bill, the main reason over 60% of Americans say they're choosing to eat out less often. I feel like I'm paying more money for either not very much food or not very good food. Now restaurants are trying to turn down the heat on inflation while still cooking up deals for their customers. Some restaurants are even offering subscription plans. At Asian food chain PF Chang's, patrons can now pay $6.99 a month for exclusive loyalty perks, including double reward points, jumping to the front of the wait list for a table, and free delivery. Industry insiders say that new revenue stream will help relieve some of the inflation stress on businesses. Have you all had to adjust your prices to reflect inflation costs? There's no secret that prices had to be adjusted, not only at our restaurant, but really everywhere, right? At this location in Los Angeles, employees say they're firing up more meals for PF Chang subscribers every day. Do you feel that people are really saving money by paying a subscription fee? I believe so. If you're a loyal customer and this is the place that you go to all the time, it's definitely worth it. At Panera Bread, a $120 annual subscription will get you into its unlimited sip club, where drinks and deliveries are available without any additional fees. Some smaller chains and local restaurants are thinking outside the box, offering inflation conscious menus with options that are cheaper than a full price plate. And restaurant operators 
are becoming pretty innovative in terms of how they operate in this extremely high cost environment. If you're looking to dine out without breaking the bank, look for daily specials, which often offer a side and a drink for less. Opt for a late lunch instead of a more expensive dinner portion. And if you plan to carry out, see if you can order directly online or through the restaurant's app to help avoid extra delivery fees. That's our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, black-owned restaurants weren't just places to get a meal, several becoming crucial meeting spots for activists at the forefront of the civil rights movement. And the families still operating these restaurants today are committed to honoring their historic legacies. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. We're in Harlem, the epicenter of black culture in the United States. Now, many historians agree the Harlem Renaissance paved the way for the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s. So in this episode, we're traveling across the country to explore three legendary black-owned restaurants. For generations, these beloved eateries have been serving up dishes to historic figures and those fighting for change. First up, we're heading south to visit an iconic establishment that defied segregation laws. New Orleans, a city that celebrates food, music, nightlife, and history. In the Big Easy, you'll find many historic sites that played a vital role in the civil rights movement, like William Franz Elementary School, where six-year-old Ruby Bridges broke barriers in 1960, or New Zion Baptist Church, a hub for activists, and Treme, one of the oldest black neighborhoods in America. Here, you'll find the only restaurant on the U.S. Civil Rights Trail. Ducky Chase Restaurant definitely is a historical landmark institution here in New Orleans. This popular eatery is a living testament to a woman who changed the face of fine dining in America, Chef Leah Chase. I'm Stella Chase Reese, and I am the president of the corporation here at Ducky Chase's. And I'm Edgar Duck Chase IV, and I'm the executive chef here at Ducky Chase Restaurant. Stella's grandparents first opened Dookie Chase's as a po' boy shop, becoming a full-service restaurant in 1941. African Americans didn't have that place to celebrate, to celebrate birthdays, to celebrate promotions, to celebrate good grades, weddings, proms. So they opened up a place where that could happen. But the next generation had a new vision for the eatery. It was my father, Edgar Chase Jr., and his wife, Leah Lange Chase that continued the legacy that my grandparents started. Dookie Chase Jr. was an avid jazz musician who promoted some of America's first integrated concerts. His friendship with all the musicians, Ray Charles and Duke Ellington and Sarah Vaughan, we would hear stories of them after their performance coming here to dine at Dookie Chase. And Leah was determined to bring an elevated dining experience for her black patrons. She wanted the best china. She wanted linens. She wanted them to be served the best they could be served because she didn't want our community to be deprived of anything else than any other community had. That community was on the brink of a revolution years in the making. Post-1865 and the Emancipation Proclamation, with the masses of African American people now free, the country was overwhelmed hierarchies needed to be reestablished. It was important from a white supremacist point of view that black folks knew their place. 
By the late 19th century, Jim Crow laws legalizing racial segregation in the former Confederate states. Those laws were further cemented by the Supreme Court case Plessy v. Ferguson, which upheld the separate but equal doctrine. But Dookie Chases defied those laws, welcoming patrons of all races to dine and discuss political issues facing the black community. Their willingness and, and openness to everyone in the community made them a hub of safety, made them a hub of belonging. But that openness also made the Chase family a target. There were times that we had people throw things in and try to, you know, destroy the peace. But that didn't frighten my parents. They continued because they know what they were doing was the correct thing to do. By the 1960s, Dookie Chases had become a go-to spot where activists could connect and strategize. We had the opportunity to serve many of our civil rights leaders, Martin Luther King, Jesse Jackson, Rosa Parks, Thurgood Marshall. The list goes on and on. And then Freedom Bus Riders, they came here. My parents realized that until we all learn to enjoy life together and get to that part where social justice would be for everyone, that this community or any other community in our country would not grow and will not be better. In the 1970s, Leah becoming passionate about promoting black artists. Her love of art was also celebrated here at Dookie Chases when she gave African-American artists the opportunity to actually display their art on her wall because at the time they had no place to display their art. Her extraordinary life even becoming the inspiration for Disney's first black princess, Tiana. It meant a lot for her because she did have some of the kids dress up and come here. Leah Chase, the queen of Creole cuisine, passing away on June 1st, 2019. But her spirit and her culinary traditions are in vigilant and capable hands. This is Leah Chase's kitchen. It's set up the same way and we love it like that because as you know, she's still with us. She's still watching us. Chef Duke continues to serve Creole cuisine that's been on the menu for decades, from red beans and rice to shrimp clemenceau and the famous chicken a la Dukey. But the restaurant's most popular dish, gumbo. You think back to the civil rights era when we had leaders strategizing in our upstairs dining room. We fed them gumbo. You think about presidents today, President Barack Obama, President George Bush came here. We always started them with gumbo because my grandmother always believed that her gumbo will solve any problems. And we like to say her gumbo changed the course of America. Gumbo, an official state food of Louisiana. Dookie Chase's version has a little something for everyone. Not one, but two types of sausage. Some Louisiana blue crab. What we do here is we take the top shell off, we clean it up, and we just crack it in half, release some of those flavors. Chicken and shrimp. This is really coming out to be a beautiful gumbo. The gumbo simmering until it's ready to serve. I mean, if you just smell this, the neighborhood smelling this, everybody knows when Dookie Chase is cooking gumbo. Today, the Chase empire is expanding. Chef Duke just opened the family's newest restaurant, Chapter 4. Being a fourth generation African American restaurant tour is huge. Many generations now working side by side. Being around my family, that's the biggest blessing. I'm so grateful that I get to work with all my family and it's such a joy. And that joy, best expressed over great food. Hello, family. Hey, yes. Enjoying everything. We it's are great to enjoying everything. Good. What's the song that Rachel? I'm going down to Dookie Chase to, to get, get myself my... some gumbo. When, when the service is right, they treat, treat you nice. nice. The whole restaurant, Dookie Chase's, is a, is a gift to the family that was given by my great grandparents. And so we want to make sure that, you know, the restaurant sustains that legacy and all the traditions. Leah Chase said, food bills, big bridges. If you can eat with someone, you can learn from them. And when you learn from someone, you can make big changes. We can change the course of America in this restaurant over a bowl of gumbo. We can talk to each other and relate to each other. When we eat together.
A trip to Harlem just wouldn't be complete without a meal here at Sylvia's Restaurant. This neighborhood institution has been serving up soul food since 1962. And what started as a small luncheonette has now become a family empire, beloved by tourists, locals, and plenty of famous faces. The cornbread was sweet, it was warm, and it just reminded me of home. It took me back to my grandmother's cooking, so I really enjoyed it. What brought me here today was that I was hungry and wanted some good soul food. So where do you go in Harlem? Sylvia's. Soul food is the cultural identity marker that really surmises our journey as a people living in America. Trinesse Woods Black is the granddaughter of the legendary queen of soul food, Sylvia Woods. Sylvia grew up in Hemingway, South Carolina, where she met her love, Herbert Woods, when they were 11 and 12. They fell in love picking beans after school. But this entrepreneur-to-be wasn't content with life on the farm. My grandmother, um, she came to New York when she was 16. She knew that this was a place that was more palatable for African Americans to like really live. Sylvia and Herbert were among the estimated six million African Americans who left the Jim Crow South during the Great Migration. They had came, you know, north to escape all of the atrocities that were happening and to really be in control of their lives. If you were black, you know, Harlem was the place to be. Sylvia finding work at a diner Johnson's Luncheonette, which she eventually purchased from the owner with a loan from her mom. Mr. Johnson knew that my grandmother would make it. And on August 1st, 1962, Sylvia's Restaurant was born. As the cultural center of black America, Harlem became a crucial site for demonstrations and organizing by leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X according to Professor Psyche williams Forson, The heart of civil rights is America, because it wasn't limited to one, one area. Though folks who were in the North, they still experienced poverty and inequality and voter suppression and homelessness. Sylvia made the restaurant a welcoming place for activists. She played her role as ensuring that the community leaders had a place to, to meet and to commune and to strategize. Everyone dined at Sylvia's. Dizzy Gillespie, Ozzie Davis, Ruby Dee. You know, these are actors and actresses that were on the front line. By the 1960s, the movement had achieved major gains, like the historic Brown versus Board of Education and successful boycotts. But racial discrimination and police brutality against black Americans persisted, resulting in deadly riots throughout the decade. Two devastating events, just four years apart, sparked destructive riots throughout Harlem. But Sylvia's was always spared. Harlem was on fire, and my grandmother kept the restaurant open because the grocery stores were not open, nothing was open, you know, people couldn't feed their kids. And she was in that kitchen making food so that this community would have something to eat. This strong connection with Harlemites has continued for decades. We have guests that eat with us every single day. And sometimes we have people that eat with us multiple times a day. Coming up, I learned the secret to Sylvia's famous fried chicken.
Sylvia's in Harlem has been serving up soul food since 1962. And this native New Yorker couldn't wait to get back into their historic dining room. <laughs> oh, wow. it's, it's so, so good, good to see, see you. It's been, so long. It's been mm. way too long. I missed you. I've missed you too. But you know what? The good thing about Sylvia's is it's like I saw you yesterday. It's coming home. It's coming it's home. It's coming home. The dining room walls showcasing famous faces and political figures along with treasured memories. This picture is one of my grandmother's favorites. This was when Winnie and Nelson Mandela came to New York when he was freed. Eating here has become a rite of passage for many candidates. And there's a young man, I don't know whatever happened to this guy. You know, I think he might have turned out okay. I, I think, think so. He, yeah. After a meal here, After yeah. This is what sent him on his path. That's right. It's the, it was the chicken. It was the chicken. <laughs> but the heart of Sylvia's is Harlem. Triness and her family have worked hard to stay active in the neighborhood, from funding college scholarships for local teens to supporting Black Lives Matter events. What is it about this restaurant that keeps people coming back? Authenticity. Authenticity times love. Sylvia's, when you come to Sylvia's, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get some good food that's going to make you feel warm. Today, over a dozen family members help run Sylvia's empire, which includes a catering business and a successful food product line. What's it like working with family? Because I know your brother Marcus, yes. your baby brother Marcus, baby brother. is there in the kitchen. What's that like? Watching my brother throw down in the kitchen is something that we always knew was going to happen. Executive chef Marcus Woods has been at the helm for five years. Sylvia's grandson, it is so good to see you. Yeah. And you're back here, you're running the kitchen. What, what's that like for you? I mean, knowing that this legacy your grandmother's in. I'm honored, I'm honored. I still get to cook for people like you in the, the community of Harlem. So as long as I can do that, I'm happy and always honored and blessed. You know, the amazing thing is food brings people together. You look in that, that, that dining room, everybody's there. Yes. Well, so, Sylvia used to always say that the first time you come to Sylvia's, you're a guest, the second time you're family. According to Marcus, fried chicken, the most beloved menu item. So, did your grandmother teach you how to do this? Yes, she taught me how to fry chicken, everything down to the seasoning. She would always say, you know, moisturize chicken and marinate it like you're putting lotion on a baby. Now, now I can't get that image out of my head exactly. now. One secret, Chef Marcus first applied a dry rub to marinate the chicken. Now is that just plain, plain flour? Yeah, this is plain flour. Uh -huh. We add a little coarse black pepper to it. Uh-huh. Drop them all in there. You just want to give it a little mix. Again, the baby metaphor. The baby metaphor. Like you're tossing the baby. After the chicken's coated, it gets a gentle shake. Then it's into the deep fryer. That looks like tender love and care right there. Oh, yeah. See how gently he's putting it in there. Putting the baby to bed. Yep, they'll let you know when they're ready to wake up. What's the best part of working here? That every day when I walk in, I get to feel like my grandmother's still with me. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like I feel her, I, I can really feel her presence in this place. And it reminds me, every time you're feeling a little lazy, it's like, all right, she's watching. <laughs> you gotta pick up, your, pick up the pace. And she treated everybody the same. Uh -huh. Celebrity, normal person, Worker, dishwasher, cook, chef. Yeah. I don't know if I could ever live up to who she was, but I'm going to. I'm gonna try. She was an amazing person. After about 15 minutes, golden perfection. Wow, that looks perfect. Now this now is you're worth, a thigh person. This is, so I, I know what you're going person. for. Oh, I remember how good this is. That's perfect. Perfect. Wow, the seasoning, it's moist, crisp. Oh, your grandmother's smiling right now. That's Sylvia's fried chicken right there. You treated the baby well. Mm -hmm. Marcus, this is fantastic. It's so great to see you. Yeah. If, if, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take this piece to go. Oh, I'm gonna pack up a whole bunch for you. Thank you.
Welcome back. In Oakland, California, Lois the Pie Queen has been serving up Southern specialties, hospitality, and of course, fabulous pies since the 1950s. But it's more than just a space for delectable food. It's a well-known hub for political activists, artists, musicians, and everyday folks to meet, mix, and collaborate. Come on down to Lois the Pie Queen. Get your breakfast on and the mean green. Lois the Pie Queen is serving up much more than brunch staples. It's just a great place for locals to come, great place for people to connect. And it's just awesome that I can come to a place like this and have some soul food. My name is Chris Davis, and I'm owner of Lois the Pie Queen. We serve food that warms the soul. This family's roots run deep in Northern California. Lois Davis, Chris's mom, began selling homemade pies at her church in the 1940s. They were an instant hit. Her husband, Roland, dubbed her the Pie Queen and saw a new business opportunity. My dad was a chef at B&G Foods in San Francisco, and they combined both of their efforts to open up the restaurant and serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In 1953, the duo opening their Oakland restaurant. So my mother ran the restaurant for 40 years, and uh, it started at 4.30 in the morning for her and ended at 11 at night, and uh, she was a pure perfectionist. Lois perfecting recipes she enjoyed growing up. The recipes were my grandmother's recipes. My grandmother was from Texas and they have maintained the test of time. All of the items that are on the menu were pretty much on the menu when my mom started the restaurant. From key lime pie topped with raspberry jam to banana cheesecake, sweet treats are always popular here. But there are plenty of savory staples that keep customers coming back every morning. And there's one dish with a special place in many folks' hearts. You might not find salmon croquettes on the menu anywhere in the Bay Area. The salmon croquettes are part salmon, part mackerel, yellow onions, salt and pepper, Italian breadcrumbs. These croquettes, which originated in the South, were a meal staple for many black families. Most black folks couldn't afford crab you know, once it became popularized. But in the absence of that, canned fish, salmon croquettes became a major filler. With a couple of cans, families could make an affordable yet delicious meal. Lois's dishes have brought in celebrities from Sammy Davis Jr. to Zendaya. And sports icons like Reggie Jackson ate here so often, they actually named a pork chop special after him. So here's my wall of fame and some of the special people that are up here. This is Black Panther Party Minister Eldridge Cleaver. All power to the people! In the 1960s and 70s, Lois welcomed members of the newly formed Black Panther Party. The restaurant is a short drive from Merritt Community College, where activists Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale first met, founding the party in 1966. Chris attended Merritt with both of them. I had Eldridge Cleaver, Angela Davis, Bobby Seale, and uh, Huey P. Newton come through the restaurant. Civil rights leaders and organizers and community leaders would come and meet and organize and strategize. There was a lot of uh, electricity in the restaurant uh, when they visited. The Black Panthers have a controversial legacy. The story we tend to hear is one of violence. What we don't hear about as much are the various lunch programs and, and free breakfast, of course. They saw black communities as in and of themselves resilient, capable of being self-sufficient. Lois and Chris were not members of the party, but it was during this era the restaurant became an important gathering space in the Oakland community for different walks of life. When people come and are needy and ask for food, we always do what my mom did, which was we always take care of them. We always give them a meal. The restaurant expanding this mission amid the pandemic, providing 16,000 meals to locals in need. It is a place for people to come and, uh, and get together and try and figure out how to make uh, our community and our world a better place. Today, that mission to help others has evolved. 
Chris uses his platform to support local musicians and keep the restaurant buzzy by bringing in younger generations. I believe that that aspect of music and musicianship is something that is in the ethos of the restaurant. Hey, Mr. Jackson, how are you? Good, I'm doing good, man. Good to see you, man. Good. He recently started a music management company for Wise Men Entertainment that he unofficially runs from the tables at Lois. It's not an accident or a coincidence that you look around and see a lot of photographs of, you know, famous folks. There's a lot of people that he supports. And I don't mean support just by putting up pictures up. He'll cultivate young artists that are looking to get an opportunity to get a platform where they can be seen and heard. Would you like hash browns, grits, or rice? Grits, of course grits. Chris is determined to keep the restaurant in the family. His son, Corey Jackson, has been overseeing the day-to-day -day at Lois for nearly five years. Working with my dad gave me an understanding of not only the hard work my grandmother put forward and how much my dad is trying to fill those shoes, and now I'm trying to fill his. Corey hoping his sons will share the passion for the family business. They can't stay away. They have a job right now. They fold silverware. It's great to see my kids and their Papa Chris bond in those times. Chris thinks Lois would be incredibly proud to see her restaurant continuing to thrive. We are the oldest black restaurant in the Bay Area. It is a tribute to my mom's efforts to support her community and to create a place that was a home away from home and a place that served food that warmed the soul. Say cheesecake! Cheesecake! <laughs> As you might imagine, keeping a restaurant running for decades is no easy feat, especially in the face of adversity. But with delicious dishes and unwavering hospitality, these historic hotspots have nourished generations fighting for social change. These places now stand as symbols of resilience, inspiring and feeding a new generation of community leaders. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome to The Boost. Did you know that April is National Poetry Month? So we are going to introduce you to a few poets who've inspired us over the years. But we will begin with a very special conversation with Grammy-winning performance poet Jay Ivey. Al Roker sat down with him to talk about the power of that art and his lasting collaborations with hip-hop legends. It is an extended conversation that you'll only see right here on The Boost. Take a look. If I'm on the highest cliff, on the highest riff, and you slipped off the side and clinched on your life in my grip, I would never, ever let you down. That's Jay Ivey with the poem Never Let Me Down at a recent show at New York's City Winery. In 2004, the poem was featured on a track with Kanye West and Jay-Z for the album The College Dropout. They discovered Jay Ivey after his rousing performances on HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam like this poem about his late father. Dear Dad, these words are being written and spoken because my heart and soul feel broken. You do a poem about your dad, yeah. which was a, a complicated relationship. Tell me about that. He was in my life when I was younger. He saw drugs and alcohol become a factor in his life and our lives, which you know led to the fights, led to the separation, led to the divorce. After the divorce, Jay didn't see his dad for 10 years. But soon after reconnecting, his father passed away, sending Jay into a years-long bout with depression. But it was poetry that healed him. I decided to write my father this letter, this poem. And I wrote, wrote this poem. There were tears on the page when I wrote it. But when I finished, the, that weight that I've been carrying for years, that depression, that anxiety, all of it just, it just lifted off of me. Now, two decades later, he's being celebrated as a Grammy Award-winning poet, the first poet to win a Grammy in the brand new Best Spoken Word Poetry Album category for his 2022 album, The Poet Who Sat By The Door. This is for the poets, y'all! Historically, there was a spoken word category, but it included poetry, audiobooks, narrations, storytelling, any recordings without music. 
and audiobooks dominated sure. the spoken word category. Meanwhile, spoken word artists are like, uh, what, what about, about us? <laughs> <laughs> After spending six years advocating for his fellow poets, Jay submitted a proposal to the Academy's Board of Trustees, and they voted to create the new poetry category. I said, well, man, I want to throw my name in the hat. <laughs> say, Let me work on an album. Back in high school, I had a teacher named Azar. What I learned is you're not going to argue with somebody named Azar. In the first track on the album, he tells the story of how he got introduced to poetry by his high school English teacher, Ms. Argue. Miss Argue? Miss Argue. <laughs> That's a great name. And uh, what I learned is you're not going to argue with somebody <laughs> named Miss Argue. Man, first time on stage, as terrified as I was, I received a standing ovation. And in that moment, my life changed. I keep on running he continues to collaborate with hip-hop and R&B artists, reuniting with an old friend, John Legend, on a new single called Running. The pair first met back in 2004 during his recording session with Kanye. At that time, Legend still went by his family name, John Stevens. I was like, man, you sound like one of the legends. I was like, you a legend, you a legend. Matter of fact, I said, I'm gonna call you from now on. I'm gonna call you the legend. So I started calling him John the Legend, John Legend. So that's how he got the name, John Legend. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, right place, right time. Wow. Jay Ivey has great pride for his south side of Chicago roots, often visiting schools there to speak with students, going back to the source of his own journey with poetry and serving as a role model for the next generation of poets. Poets hold the soul of our stories. They're the messengers of hope and reason. Street reporters who take notes for the future, who tell it like it is and how it should be. The words of the poet heals the wounds of our spirits, brings balance, breaks through the chaos, speaks life. That's why the world needs more poets. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Up next, an author and poet with millions of followers who hang on his every inspirational word. Take a look. If you've ever scrolled on social media, you may have already come across the words of young Pueblo. Diego Perez is the poet behind the pen name, inspiring readers with wisdom like, realize how short the walk is from gratitude to happiness, and Manage your reactions, but do not suppress your emotions. Since he first began sharing his words of wisdom in 2014, Young Pueblo has connected with over 2 million followers and has written two New York Times best-selling books of poetry on topics like self-love, growth, and relationships. When you first started posting your writing, what was your intent? I wanted to write about healing being possible just hopefully inspire someone else out there who also needed to find a way to heal themselves. Diego and his family emigrated from Ecuador to Boston, Massachusetts when he was four years old. My mom, she worked cleaning houses. My dad worked at a supermarket. So we were really stuck in a poverty trap. And then I think a lot of that tension just got embedded inside of me as well. When I got to college, I could not deal with any tension that was coming up inside of me. I would quickly try to hide it with, with um, drugs, with smoking, with uh, going to more parties. What was the breaking point for you? It was right after college. This time I pushed my body to the edge and I took you know, um, an assortment of different drugs. I felt like my heart was gonna explode. I ended up talking to a doctor after that episode and she told me it's a, what I described to her sounded like a mild heart attack. How has being first generation American affect your overall outlook of life, especially in that point? The first thought is my parents. I saw the immense sacrifice that they made to just give us the chance at a better opportunity. I felt like I was giving all of that up by just filling myself with more and more pleasure just so that I could run away from my pain. I knew that the only way out was to start telling myself the truth. In 2011, Diego started taking small steps toward building positive habits. These improvements eventually led him to daily meditation. So the meditation has given me a way to process these like really tough emotions. And when something challenging happens, I notice that I can feel my reaction, but it's not as overwhelming as it used to be. And meditation gave you the clarity and creativity to write and share. 
Definitely. I mean, I was never creative before meditating, you know, and I, I didn't go into meditating to become more creative. When the mind becomes lighter and it's not as burdened by past hurt that you carry, um, this creativity bubbles up. Diego's poems have been liked and shared thousands of times. And in his newest book titled Lighter, Diego shares his own journey and advice on how to achieve personal transformation. What do you hope is the biggest takeaway for people who come to you and look to your words? I hope they take away inspiration. It's really possible to transform your life. It's really possible to sort of take that big leap forward in your own evolution. Coming up, we're going to dip into the Today Show vault to revisit some of the stories of some of our favorite poets coming up after the break. Boost. You know the name Amanda Gorman, but did you know one of the very first interviews she ever did was right here on Today? Jenna Bush Hager sat down with Gorman in 2018 after she was named the first Youth Poet Laureate in the United States. Since I'm the first one, I get to set a precedent. What do I really want to see in the poetic realm in the United States? Yawning wide as the Pacific tide. Amanda Gorman is the first ever Youth Poet Laureate in the U.S. What is it like to be a first? It's intimidating. And I never really thought that I would be that person who's the first, because I remember when I was little reading about people, it doesn't get past me that not only am I the first youth poet laureate, but at the same time, I'm the first woman youth poet laureate and the first black youth poet laureate. 19-year-old Amanda was awarded the prestigious title last April at Gracie Mansion in New York City. A lot of your poetry focuses on social change, social justice. Where does that passion come from? Mm, I think that passion comes from my heritage, comes from this place where like, I must write, I must speak up, because there's been too many people who've been kept from that opportunity. Who inspired you growing up? Oh, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda grew up in Los Angeles, and she attributes a lot of her success to her mom, Joan Wicks, a teacher who raised her and her twin sister as a single mother. Amanda's passion for poetry started in the third grade. Talk to me about when you first knew you loved poetry? Um, I was around seven or eight years old and my teacher Shelly had us reading um, Ray Bradbury's Dandelion Wine. I was like, oh my goodness, Bradbury just related candy to something completely different. That's what I want to do with my life. That's who I want to be. I love that it was a metaphor. You were a yes. third grader with oh, a metaphor and that's all you The needed. metaphor hit home. It was like magic. Poetry has definitely been one of the most stable expressions for me of my identity and who I am. I love whenever I'm writing to have just all these books of people I look up to beside me. What I really like to do is choose like one word from each of like a collection of books I have, make like a word cloud and select them to make a new poem. But public speaking didn't come naturally. Heal or pass and will always be our 
our future. It took courage, determination, and grit for Amanda to get on stage. You spoken about having a speech impediment. And do you feel like in some ways that led you to poetry? Oh, a hundred percent. And a lot of times I talk about having a speech impediment and the difficulty of literally speaking up for myself. The voice I'm hearing aloud can't pronounce ours, it can't pronounce shh. It kind of sounds a bit garbled, but I hear this strong, self-assured voice when I'm reading this, you know, simple text. And what that told me is the power of your inner voice over that which people might hear through their ears. The only thing that could impede me was myself. Now a sophomore at Harvard, Amanda started One Pen, One Page, an organization inspiring other young writers to share their voices. So in a world that I think needs light constantly, in a world where social change is being talked about a lot. Where does poetry come in? Poetry is at the forefront of that, from the Declaration of Independence to Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Poetry has always been the thread that is weaving throughout kind of the fabric of American and global history. I straddle black girl's tango between northern the heights. ebony blood of my pen against the cool flesh of my journal. What is breaking through, breaking boundaries? What does that mean to you? I think Breaking through, especially in this day and age, is not only breaking through the door, but it's holding it open so that other people can come through. Will we write an American lyric? We are just beginning to tell. Focus on your path, focus on your purpose, and how you, specifically and specially as yourself, can break through a barrier. From one history-making poet to another, Carrie Smith sat down with Joy Harjo to learn how she shares the old story of America with a new voice. In a darkened room in downtown Tulsa, a woman wails through a saxophone solo. Then, riffs through some word jazz. White man felt important and powerful. Joy Harjo is not shy about self-expression and is rarely at a loss for words. The phone rings one day and the Library of Congress says, you're the new poet laureate and you thought what? Lightning went through me. First thing is like, what a responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Harjo is the first Native American to be named poet laureate of the United States. She says it's like being an ambassador for poetry and in her case, a voice for the seldom heard. You know, this is the power of poetry. It's brought all of us here. What an opportunity, a doorway for Native people. We've been so disappeared in the story of American poetry, American history, and yet we're the, the root of what it means to be an American. Harjo has written award-winning volumes on what it means to come from those roots, words often raw and deeply revealing. When I performed and somebody does a really long introduction with all of these things I've done, one time I got up and said, well, my list of failures is much longer. <laughs> it would roll out the door. Does that end up enhancing what you then do in terms of art? Of course, because there were times where I was suicidal. What could potentially destroy my mind, my heart, was actually good building material. <laughs> Her most recent book, An American Sunrise, connects us to the horrors of the forced removal of Native Americans from their homelands in the Deep South. Would you read a couple okay. of these poems? Um, this one right okay. here. Okay. In Sunday school, we were told Lot's wife looked back and turned to salt. But her family wasn't leaving paradise. We loved our trees and waters and the creatures and earths and skies in that beloved place. Those beings were our companions, even as they fed us, cared for us. If I turn to salt, it will be of petrified tears from the footsteps of my relatives as they walked west. Yeah, we've got a lot of stories. Harjo is well known in Oklahoma. Her Muscogee roots run deep. Here she mentors and tutors young students it's really awesome to be around her. She's my role model. Like, I aspire to be something like her one day. Is she cool? Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. She is generous, a sharer of extraordinary gifts. 
This new title, Poet Laureate of the United States, fits. Poetry holds so much that we go to them at times of grief, at times of joy, at times of transformation. You'll always find poetry. You can hold it in your heart. You can hold it in your hands. Harry Smith, Tulsa. Just ahead, how one young poet caught the attention of Oprah Winfrey. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are celebrating National Poetry Month here on The Boost. Next, meet the young poet with an inspiring story of passion and perseverance and a mission that caught the attention of Oprah Winfrey. Poetry, what comes to mind? Growing up in Kansas City, Missouri, Marjane Neal suffered a childhood of abuse and homelessness. I had two sisters and we were very poor. There were times where we did not have food for ourselves. The moment that we got evicted and we ultimately had to go to the homeless shelter was one of the darkest times. I knew that life wouldn't be the same after this. While living in the shelter, Marjay's mother insisted she attend an art workshop put on by Halo, a nonprofit that provides housing and education to thousands of at-risk children around the world. She came to Halo pretty quiet and reserved and very much on guard. She was very angry. She didn't know how to express the things that she had been through. I was a very defensive child because I had to be. I kept everybody at arm's length. I want that love, but I'm scared to receive it. I'm scared that you might leave after you love me. But after more visits to Halo, Marjay started opening up. As she grew, her story just started to change a little bit, a little bit. She started having these little pivotal moments. The room was just full of love. There's art supplies everywhere. And as an artsy creative child, I was in heaven. I could tell that she was using words to process the things that she had been through and try to work through them on paper. In high school, Marjay discovered her passion for poetry and started competing at the national level. I wrote my first poem about a traumatic childhood experience. Poetry provides a lot of relief. Like the sky before a much needed rain. She was one of our best poets. Individuals in the audience who are complete strangers to are in tears. She's touched them in such a way. When I write, I write in pen because it's permanent. And although some feelings aren't permanent, you have to remember where you come from in order to grow and get to where you've been. Now 20 years old, Marjay is studying journalism on a full ride scholarship to the University of Missouri and returns to Halo to lead writing workshops for teens. 
Marge has such an incredible story of resilience to share. She's like a megaphone for these kids who are suffering through the same type of thing that she did. They can see themselves in her. Poetry has saved my life in multiple different ways. If somebody gets something from my poem and my experiences, then <laughs> my job is done. In February, Marjay shared her story in a documentary that debuted at Halo's annual auction. The event raised $650,000 for homeless youth. But it was Marjay who received the biggest surprise of all. So there's someone else who heard your story and wanted to interview you. Hello. Hi. Hello, Marjay. <laughs> Hi. I'm so glad to meet you. It was, it was surreal. I would never in a million years I would have thought that you would be saying my name. When you read your words, you know that that comes from such a deep, powerful, and soulful space. You're a shining example of what is possible for everybody. What a journey for Marge. She is showing you that artistry can really create a path for success. Where you come from doesn't define who you are, but it can influence where you go. Anything is possible if you put in the work, if you move with love and you have passion and purpose. Words can be extremely powerful, especially messages of kindness and gratitude. And a few teachers in Detroit wanted to remind their students just how powerful words can be. Kate Snow has that story. At Roseville Middle School near Detroit, the simplest of projects is reminding students and staff about the power of words. Are you wondering why you're here? Yeah. <laughs> Reading teacher Stacy Earle had a big idea. What did you ask your staff to do? I asked my teachers, secretaries, custodians, our cooks at lunch to write a card to a student, any one of their choice, of why they inspire them. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So you this year, they all? surprised some of the students with handwritten notes of gratitude. The reason why we invited you down here today is because we wanted to tell you that you inspire Miss Moore and I <laughs> to come to work every day. The kids had their parents' permission to You're be filmed by the school. Humor. You're amazing. Thank you and so I love much. You. <laughs> you can see the experience was profoundly moving for both for students you. and staff. You give me so much love in my heart and I love having class with you guys. So I wanted to give you and say thank you. Come here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, now a real hug. <laughs> oh. oh. You're amazing. <laughs> English teacher Emily Grimes presented letters to four students, including Amaya Brown. What is it about Amaya that you wanted to recognize? Her, her leadership. I narrowed it down to her because I, I guess the bottom line is that she's shown me that she's there for me as I am there for her. I wrote something for you. Social worker Julie Cooper's yeah, message brought eighth grader Alicia Turner to tears. To I'm really grateful you're here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. She is an inspiration for me um, to come to work, and I really cherish the relationship that we have. She gives you good advice when, it, when you need it. More than 50 heartfelt letters in all, lifting up students and educators alike. You light up our classroom with your kindness, and you are going to make the world a better place. So. showing up for each other in the most basic but powerful way. For Sunday Today, Kate Snow. Just ahead, a viral video to boost your day.
to the boost, we have one more video that will surely brighten your day. Check it out. All right, when it comes to big awards over the years, you've heard a ton of people say this. It's just an honor to be nominated. <laughs> but for one elementary school kid in California, it's a whole lot better to win. <laughs> A student with terrific leadership skills. Congratulations, Franklin. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. Doing the happy dance. Oh Franklin. God. That's how adults feel yeah. inside. That's how that's we, exactly. we don't show it, but that's how we yeah. feel inside. That's exactly right. He took home oh, again yeah. that terrific leadership oh. award. It's first award. <laughs> Very first time, kid is doing it. That's You're right, great. Carson, that's a beautiful point. Yeah. Kids do on the outside what we think on the inside. Uh, Love those. Always leaves us with a smile. Well, that is it for today. We're going to see you next week for more on The Boost right here on Today All Day. I'm a morning person. I love the morning, and I love sharing that joy with our audience. You make a choice to spend time with us, and that's very special. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, Spring Finds Under 50. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back with a new episode of Shop All Day. And today, we're embracing all things spring with our favorite items for the season. From colorful spring dresses to a set of pretty pearl barrettes, we've got something for everyone, and all for under $50. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. To kick things off, let's talk about one of my absolute favorite spring wardrobe secret weapons, the classic striped tee. Hello, nautical chic, yes. So I'm thrilled to introduce you to the J. Crew boat neck tee and it's pretty close to perfect. I mean, I call it a secret weapon. Why? Because it's an instant outfit maker. Yep, you can pair this with practically everything in your closet. Put it on with jeans, put it on with trousers, put it on with shorts, and you instantly look pulled together. What I love so much about this particular striped tee is first of all, the fabric. I wish you guys could feel it. It's a great medium weight. It's made out of cotton. Of course, the boat neck style, and check out this silhouette. So it's cropped, but just slightly cropped. Don't worry, it's not belly bearing, but it makes it for a more flattering silhouette. You can tuck it in, you can tuck it out, and it comes in two colors, the navy and white, and a wonderful, almost mocha latte cream and white. And it's size inclusive, and I think this shirt looks really expensive. I can't believe that it's under $50 and so high quality. This next item covers one of the biggest trends we're seeing for spring, the romantic ruffle. And you may have heard this trend called a lot of things, Regency core, prairie core, cottage core, but regardless of what you call it, the common denominator is the ladylike soft frills. And this blouse is so fabulous. It's from Target, it's from their Who, What, Where collection. And talk about ruffles. I mean, isn't this a fabulous ruffle? If you can see here, it's actually lace trimmed and it goes all the way from the top of the shoulder and it runs all the way down the side of the shirt. Look at these micro florals. Yes, these little dainty florals are one of the hallmarks of the cottage core, Regency core, prairie core style. And what I love so much about these florals is normally with the trend, you see it in muted tones. 
not with this blouse. It's in the great poppy bold colors of the season. Brights are such a big trend and the fabric. It is so light and airy and I really like where it hits on the hip. It's quite flattering. You can tuck it in, you can tuck it out so it's versatile and it comes in sizes extra small through 4X. Now we're not done with these romantic details. I wanna show you some happy spring dresses that also happen to incorporate this trend and then some. So these old navy dresses are pretty much guaranteed to become part of your spring uniform. Why? Because not only are they stylish, but shoppers say they are super comfortable too. I'm always looking for that running out the door, throw it on and look fabulous solution. And these dresses are it. I mean, look at that. First of all, we've got the flutter sleeve dress and it's called the flutter sleeve dress because it's got these wonderful little flutter style ruffles on the straps. So we have this fabulous, if you can see, smock top, which stretches and moves with you. So it's really, really easy to wear. And we've also got this very easy, breezy A-line silhouette. It comes in two different lengths. It's got a wonderful tier A-line silhouette that is just so easy to wear. I've tried these on, they're incredibly comfortable. Now we also have a second style from an Old Navy and it's called the swing dress. So if you've ever worn a swing dress, then you would know that it's one of the most comfortable silhouettes on earth. I mean, look at that. It's got movement. It's essentially a wonderful A-line silhouette. These even have pockets. I love a pocket. And the swing dress also comes in two different styles. The short style, which is made out of this really soft t-shirt material. And we've also got the midi style. Now this one is made out of poplin and just so happens to come in my favorite color combo, the red and the pink. You're gonna see this color combo everywhere this spring. And I think it is so chic and stylish. Okay, let's take it back to the 90s and talk about a trend that I bet you'd never thought you'd wear again. Yes, the bucket hat. And at first I thought, I was a little intimidated. There's no way I thought I could pull off the bucket hat. But guess what? I tried it and I can. And if I can pull it off, so can you. Look, it's an adorable silhouette and it's got sort of a medium brim that you can turn up or turn down. It gives you a little sun protection. And this is made out of a fabulous cotton. It's thick and it's from that surfer brand Billabong. I also really love all of the fun colors. And I just think that this is such, you know, a fun way to jazz up your spring style. So let's move on to another big trend for spring that's near and dear to my heart. As you can see, pearl core. Yes, all things pearl are trending big time this spring. And one of the easiest and most affordable ways to experiment with this pearl trend is with these gorgeous pearl hair accessories. Yes, this is a set. It comes with 12 different embellished barrette and bobby pins with pearls all under $10. And the brand says that these are handmade pearls. I like to think of these little pieces as jewelry for your hair. And with this trend, more is more. Don't be afraid to load them up and wear a few at a time, especially the bobby pins. I mean, so cute. You can put a little on the side and leave one side down, or you can even do a high pony, and have a few of your barrettes and bobby pins on the side. Onto some spring style for your feet. This simple but chic pair of sandals that can effortlessly take you from day to night. It's one of the most popular slide sandal styles of the past couple of seasons. The H-Band Flat Sandal from Amazon Essentials. And look at these, they are so simple. I think they're so classic. I love the H-Band and they come in some excellent neutrals that is gonna go with your entire closet. And check this out. Look at this cushy footbed. They've also got this rubber sole, which we love, and this metallic. Metallics are the new neutral. They go with absolutely everything, and I really, really think they're fabulous for both spring and summer. I mean, these really are wear anywhere slides. And if you want to keep those toes covered this season before it really warms up, we have another shoe option for you. 
These are the Lorena Natural Pointed Toe Slides and they are a Lulu's brand exclusive. And I absolutely love the Mule Silhouette. They're so sophisticated, clean and simple. And I've got to say, I love these raffia on the straw texture, but these also come in some other great colors. They come in sophisticated neutrals and even a faux snake. This looks like a cool pair of shoes that you'd want to wear with pretty much everything in your closet. And lastly, something that can complete almost any outfit and what I like to call a spring closet hero, a pair of classic sneakers. Let's face it, the past two years have secured the sneaker plates at the very top of the shoe pyramid. Sneakers have arguably been the number one shoe trend for the past couple of seasons and they are right up there for spring as well. These are also from Old Navy and they're called the Soft Brush Faux Suede Sneaker and I like how they have this wonderful sort of faux suede upper and the little silver detail. I think that's really cute. And I can't get over how great and versatile these wonderful faux suede tan sneakers are. I mean, these actually work as a nude. And the brand says that the insole is memory foam, which shoppers are really excited about. And they say, it's like walking on clouds. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the J. Crew boat neck t-shirt, the Target ruffle blouse, the flutter sleeve dress and the swing dress, the bucket hat, the pearl barrette, the H-band flat sandal, the pointed toe slides, and the old navy faux suede sneakers. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Mako and Lovu is sitting down with Style Maven and founder of Pencil and Paper Co., Jen Soar. She shares her must-haves for the spring season, from colorful art prints for your home to a bold and stylish pair of sunglasses. So don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. 
And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Today, we're diving into the season with the best spring picks across fashion, beauty, home, and more, all under $50. And here to bring us her favorites is style maven and entrepreneur Jen Soar. She's the founder of Pencil and Paper Co., a lifestyle brand with a focus on fashion and decor. Her personal motto, color makes us happy. Jen, you make us happy. How are you, Jen? Hello. So excited to be here, really. It's just, it's such a pleasure. It really is to have you here. We're so excited. So tell us about the philosophy of your company, Pencil and Paper Co. Well, I think that we're really on a mission to help women create the life that they want. And I think there's so many things that come together to be able to do that. I think our love of fashion and interiors, lifestyle, entertaining, travel, really just finding the joy in life and, and celebrating that through color and pattern and things that we love. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about color and pattern. Where does your inspiration come from? I love how you use it. Well, I'm truly such a believer that surrounding yourself with things that are colorful and happy and graphic and pattern filled really bring joy to your life. And, and that was certainly one of our missions on all the products that we develop, the partners that we work with. I think that we all share that um, common intention to bring more joy to the world. Yeah, something that we definitely all need. I've heard people say that fashion really tells a story about the person wearing it. What do you think your pieces say about you? I think they say that I'm optimistic and that I'm a believer in color really is such a, a mood lifter. And there are simple things that I believe that we can do in life um, that makes our day to day better. And really, I think that simple introduction of color and pattern and art and things that make you happy and bring more joy to life, there's really nothing better than that for us. You're so right. And fashion, your style particularly, makes me so happy. We're talking about spring pieces. So Jen, how do you transition your winter clothes into spring or should you have a separate spring wardrobe? Well, I will say that I love color um, every single day of the year. So I'm a believer that things absolutely can can transition. Um, I love to find you know pieces that we know will be in our wardrobe for many years to come. And then the idea of mixing that up um, with more inexpensive finds that you might you know bring in and out seasonally. So I think it's that high-low mix that I really love, but always, always color and pattern. We love a good high-low situation. Yeah. Let's talk about some of your favorites for the season. I want to start with the first one here. These art prints are so cute. I want to know um, where in your home would you place these? I think these are super fun in a gallery wall. They come unframed, but you can simply pop them into a really great looking eight by 10 frame, mm -hmm. easy to get at any of your local retailers. And I love the idea of layering art together. So, you know, you might have something more sophisticated with something a bit more whimsical. I think these are great in kids rooms, playrooms, nurseries. They mix beautifully into a gallery wall. They really just serve so many purposes yeah. and come in so many color compass that we love. Okay, on to some more fun, bright colors. This tote really says it all. And I'd love a versatile tote. What would you use this for, Jen? Our goal with this, it's such a great, sturdy size. This is the perfect carry-on bag when you're traveling. It goes under the seat if you need to, into the overhead, but you can really fill it up with tons of things and it's super strong. So I throw my vanity case, my computer, everything that I'm traveling with. I think it's also a really perfect um, bag for the gym or weekend bag or mommy bag for diapers. <laughs> I think really its functionality is endless and I have owned these for years and they really, really hold up. They look yeah. so amazing in person as well. Let's move on to the clutch. I have to tell you, Jen, this clutch makes me so happy. A lot of these spring weddings oh. that we're invited to. Yes. How cute is this? Okay, yeah. what would you yeah. wear this with? Well, this makes me so happy too. And our goal with this is that we obviously love color with any outfit that you wear and a touch of sparkle. And I am really, as you all can tell, about fun color combinations. So I love the juxtaposition of this really poppy yellow would be so fun with lavender and that idea of complementary colors. Navy, if you're more classic and, and you're a little scared of color, I think navy is a great 
substitution for black and getting a little bit out of your comfort zone and still bringing color to your outfit. So such, just such a fun poppy addition to your most basic outfits even. All right, I feel like you can dress this up or dress this down. Love Absolutely. it. Okay, let's move on to the next piece. You partnered with the brand Neely and Chloe to create this next product. Ah, so cute, the printed luggage tag. I feel like there's so Our many favorite. ways to personalize your style. Talk to me about this. Why do you love it? What I love about these is that they do have really wonderful patterns and a, a pop of great color that you can add to your luggage and make sure that you're not going to lose your luggage to the airport. But you can also customize them. So we have the ability to monogram. We, of course, love this little scallop detail. And I think these are even darling hanging on our little yes. bag or purse. I mean, I just think they're, they just add, again, a touch of whimsy to you know any bag that you own in your wardrobe already. So it's a great way to refresh something that you own. This is so clever. I'm obsessed with this. All right, Jen, let's move on to a couple of your personal picks for spring, starting with these Rattan ball hoop earrings. How do you style these Rattan earrings? Well, I will say, you know, I love a hoop earring for summer. It's still lightweight, but they really make a statement. So I love the idea, you know, as we were talking about bringing a couple of fresh new pieces into your wardrobe each season. Accessories are an amazing way to do that and pop on these great little playful hoops with any of your summer dresses. Um, and they just add a layer of fun. And I love that idea that it makes you feel finished and polished and happy. It is just that little cherry on top. It these, sure is. I'm getting them in all the colors. They're so cute. Perfect. And the last one we have are these super cute cat eye sunglasses. Jen, these make me so happy. Do these work on any face shape? I think they do. I love a statement sunglass for summer. So something large scale, I always think is fun, gives you great coverage for sun. And the introduction of these happy sort of whimsical colors. I think they're just a great addition to any outfit. They are so fun. They really make me happy. The blue, the red, the white, they come in a bunch of different colors. Thank and Jen, you. I really do mean it. You make us happy. Thank you so Aww. much for joining us today. Well, it was just truly such a joy. Thank you for having me. That was awesome. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The Hard and Color Studies Prints, the Color Lover Tote, the Beaded Clutches, the Luggage Tag, the Rattan ball hoop earrings, and the cat eye sunglasses. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, our editors picks with Adriana Brock, who has more springtime finds, from a moisturizing sunscreen to a picnic mat that'll get you enjoying the outdoors. Don't go away. <laughs>
everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock and I've got even more of our favorite finds for spring, all under $50. In today's Editor's Picks, I'm bringing you some beauty picks and accessories that you can use on the go and that pack a really great punch for the value. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone right now to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started. If you're looking to refresh your skin routine for spring, I've got some beauty picks to get you started with an elevated line of body wash from Salt Air. So every part of your beauty routine should feel luxurious and we don't think you should skimp on your body wash. The brand says that the formula is the best three in one. It's a nourishing serum that cleanses your skin. It's really gonna moisturize your skin. The brand says it's also suitable for all skin types and a lot of reviewers note that it's not too fragrant, which is really nice. They also come in six different unique scents as well as a fragrance-free version. And the bottles are so gorgeous in these beautiful bright colors. Here's a tip from one of our producers. You can even use these as a hand wash to add a pop of color to your bathroom or your kitchen sink. Let's move on to another beauty product that's essential as we start to see more of the sun this season, sunscreen. TikTok put Glow Recipe's watermelon mask on the map and it's also responsible for making the brand's first ever sunscreen sell out at Sephora. This one has a fruity scent that smells just like spring, but it's not overpowering according to the reviewers. And you can guess by its name, all of Glow Recipe's products are supposed to give you a dewy, lip from within glow, which is hydrating and makes a great pick for anyone that's dealing with dry skin after winter. The bottle comes in the brand's signature pink color to not only brighten your face, but also your day too. Here's another beauty item for spring that you can take on the go with you. This is one of my personal favorites. It's also a fan favorite facial roller from Revlon. So for all of you guys dealing with the opposite of dry skin, this oil absorbing roller is gonna become your new makeup bag must have. Revlon's original volcanic roller went viral last year and the brand upped the ante with its latest innovation. Not only can you soak up oil, but the brand says the new stainless steel ball actually helps to cool and depuff skin on those warm spring days. It's the ultimate skincare set for less than $20. And the brand says that you can wash both balls and reuse them, and you can use them on all skin types as well. And when you're ready to head out the door, I've got the perfect tote with so much space for all your spring essentials. This mesh tote from Amazon is really checking all the boxes. It is so cute, functional, and affordable. And we love that it comes in a bunch of fun and bright colors that fit the spring and summer color palettes too. So if you have spring vacations planned, the mesh fabric is great. You can toss in clothes, towels, after a beach day. Plus, it's not gonna take up too much space in your suitcase, but you could pack it up. And you don't have to be on vacation to use it either. You can toss a book in and a snack and head to the park this season. It also makes for a great reusable grocery bag since it can hold so much. And that's not the only bag we have our eye on for spring. Here's a little something more chic and on trend. Bucket bags and bright handbags are trending right now, and this affordable style is the best of both worlds. It combines fashion and function, and all you have to do is toss in your essentials and head out the door. We also love that it actually has side pockets inside so you can keep everything organized, and the drawstring closure isn't just a cute detail, but it makes it so easy to open up your bag and grab whatever you have stashed in there when you're on the go. It comes in faux leather and suede designs, which make it suitable for everything from the weekend to going to the office, and you don't even have to switch up your bags for different occasions. Let's move on to a few items that'll really put you in the spring mood. Grab your family or friends and head to the nearest park with this floral picnic mat from Mountain Warehouse. Whether you look forward to impromptu picnics in the spring or you already have some camping trips lined up for the summer, this is one item you're gonna wanna have handy. The brand says that the mat has a water resistant back so you don't have to worry if the ground is damp. And since it's compact, all you have to do is fold it right up. It's over about a foot long and pop it into your backpack or keep it in the trunk of your car. It also has a really neat carry handle which makes it really convenient to tote around. And of course, it comes in a bunch of fun patterns that are perfect for spring. And if you like a more traditional look to your picnic blanket, we've got these classic square pattern mats from Amazon. We'll also want this picnic blanket in our beach bag all summer long. And the brand says it's sandproof, waterproof, and it's large enough to fit six to eight adults sitting all at once. And lastly, we've got an item that might come in handy if you wanna avoid getting caught in those April showers. 
an umbrella with a unique twist. Reviewers are going crazy for this umbrella, which they say actually keeps them dry. One reviewer even wrote that this is the only umbrella they've used in Chicago that can stand up to the wind. It's actually designed to funnel water away when it's closed, and it has a huge arc which measures two feet in diameter, which is gonna help keep you covered and dry when it's open. It's $25, which is a little bit more of an investment than the one you may already own, but it's so worth it, and reviewers wrote that they really recommend it. Let's run through the products one more time. The Salt Air Body Wash, the Glow Recipe Watermelon Sunscreen, the Revlon Oil Absorbing and Cooling Facial Roller and Refill Pack, the Bucket Bag, the Amazon Mesh Beach Tote, the Picnic Blankets, and the Reverse Stick Umbrella. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Editor's Picks. It's been so fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next week for a new episode of Shop All Day Multitaskers. It is time for Today Food. With Easter Sunday coming up, many of you may be serving ham for dinner. Well, Atlanta chef Deborah Van Treese has something a little bit different. She's the creative director and the owner of Twisted Soul Cookhouse and Pours. And as a former flight attendant, Deborah's love for travel inspired her debut cookbook. It's called The Twisted Soul Cookbook, Modern Soul with Global F Flavors. Deborah, first of all, you're so cool. Uh, just reading your intro about, so you picked up a lot of these tricks on your travels. You learned a lot. Yes, yes. Um, I've had the opportunity to travel as a flight attendant. I've had the opportunity to live in different countries, and I've picked up all kind of ideas and thoughts on food. Now, I like the twisted part of it. What? How come you use twisted in your titles? Um, I use twisted because I'm a little loco. <laughs> no, seriously, it's because um, it's a little bit of a twist on soul food. Uh -huh. You know, in my opinion, all cultures have a soul food, and that's a little bit of a twist on what you normally hear. Um, and I try to infuse those different cultures in the traditions of mine. Okay, well, let's let's do a twist on a, on a ham. A lot of people are familiar with making a ham, but you, your twist is you involve some, what, some Coca-Cola? A little bit of cola, uh, some ginger, some cool things. Come on over, let's talk okay. about this. Okay, so, you know, typically I will do this with either a ham or ham hops, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very, very easy. We've got ginger, some onions. Mm -hmm. We just like put all of this ginger, onions, garlic, mm -hmm. and we saute it for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Stir it all up. Yeah, we let it heat up for about, like I said, five minutes so that the onions like start sweating a little bit. Okay. And then we just start dumping things in there. What's so on? I've got dry mustard. Uh -huh. I have some Chinese five spice, which is a little bit different for most hams, um, some star anise. I've got a kumquat marmalade that I've made, but you can use orange marmalade. Kumquat, um, nice. If you choose to do the kumquat, it's definitely in the cookbook, the recipe. Okay. And then some red pepper flakes. Oh, yeah. Heat. And some cilantro. Okay, that's interesting. And then I use diet cola. Because I want to control the sweetness just a little bit. So is that, um, it looks kind of flat. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so you, you put it in like it's right out of the cans. Okay. Like it's right out of the can. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. I'd let this simmer like 15 minutes. You know, I've like pre-cooked the ham just a little bit. And just like to be certain, I've got a bone-in ham, which is a very budget-friendly ham. Mm -hmm. It's bone-in. Um, it's completely cooked. I take... I've like let it simmer in just some water, yeah. soften it up a little bit, and then just remove some of that fat. Okay. Get down to about a fourth of an inch. I'm going to take and score it. Score it. Oh. And why are you doing that? It's so that the flavors of the marinade will get all down in that ah, ham. Okay. And also, it makes it look kind of cool. It does. Look, oh, that's that tic-tac-toe thing going. That's okay. that tic-tac-toe thing. Ah. All right. So once I've got it scored... This would be simmering. We take this whole ham, right stick it in, in a Dutch there. oven. If you, don't have ah. a Dutch, if you don't have a Dutch oven, you can use a roasting pan. 
out. And then I just kind of take a little bit and just glaze it over. Okay. I'm going to stick that in the oven on 350 degrees. This is super, super easy. That's guys. amazing. So how long do you cook it in the oven? I'm going to cook this one because it's about seven pounds for about an hour and a half. It's about 12 to 14, 15 minutes per pound. Okay, so and, I if let the, that go. and if the top doesn't fit because the ham's too big, that's okay. That's okay. okay. That's okay. Stick it the in. ham's going to actually shrink as it heats through. Ah. The pot's going to fit. Okay. What does it look like when it's all done? Okay, let's go over here. Okay. So we've got our hoe mm. set up here. So this is our ham. You see the nice color mm -hmm. on it, the glaze. Yeah, we've got some green beans just because it's Easter, and that's what my mom always fixed. Mm -hmm. I have a little extra glaze. I'll kind of serve this over mm -hmm. some arugula yeah. greens also. And another cool thing we've got is some bacon and praline mac and cheese. What are you talking about? Yum. <laughs> so oh. we've got our mac and cheese. With bacon? Our beautiful ham with bacon and pralines. I can't. No, you need to stop. We can't take it. Okay. <laughs> Deborah, thank you so much. Uh, best of luck. Enjoy your Easter. And thank you for sharing the recipes. For these recipes, you can head to today.com slash food. And if you want Deborah's cookbook, it's called The Twisted Soul. We see it. Go to today.com slash shop. <laughs> Celebrating Passover, we have a dish that will wow your guests. New York Times food columnist <laughs> Melissa Clark wants to serve up lasagna, but with a swap you know, might not be ready for. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is a this is a great idea. Yeah. So instead of using noodles, because you can't use noodles during Passover, sure. if you observe, we use matzah, and you put them in the layers just like you would no cooked lasagna noodles. It's so easy and, and it's so good. Okay. Exactly. All right. So, so how do we get yeah, started? Yeah. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little marinara sauce. Okay. Really simple. I've mm -hmm. got some sliced garlic here. Mm -hmm. My oil, olive oil, oil, nice okay. and hot. And okay, my secret whenever I make marinara sauce, anchovies. Oh, yeah. But wait, but you better you chop, 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 chop them. But what if you don't like anchovies? Then you leave them out. Oh, okay. I thought they said it's salt. No, but you know yeah. the thing about anchovies is for this, they dissolve. You they don't dissolve. Even know you don't notice. That's you don't even know they're there, but yeah. they add a lot Can't of the flavor. Can't see the fur on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they dissolve. I swear. Here, look at that. See how they oh, kind of yeah, dissolve? Oh, yeah, she's right. She's right. And then just a little well, bit of red right. pepper. I'm not going to use it all. Okay. Salt and pepper. Yep. So, and then after five minutes, they just they dissolve the garlic. It's a little brown. You can smell it, right? But what do the anchovies add, right? We we could say, oh, we get the pepper. We get the, yeah, the yeah, garlic, yeah. but we wouldn't think anchovies. Okay, yeah. so you know that savory flavor that people call umami? You mm -hmm. know that? Yeah. That's what they add. They just add an extra layer of okay. flavor, and it just makes it, ri it's like richness. It just, All right. okay, let me tell you I'm what they trust add. You know, you, on you, know the time, you know sometimes you eat something and you're like, why is this so, so good? good? Probably that, it has anchovies hiding in it. Okay. Trust me, try it once, you'll never Hide go back. All right. All right, and so you just tomatoes. With um, scissors? Yeah, right out of the can. You know how you get tomatoes out of the can? Mm -hmm. and. 
instead of chopping up, it makes a mess, or using your hands, I like to use scissors. Just snip it right up. Yeah, and then you just add it right to the sauce. Um, Hoda, can you just stick that rosemary right? See rosemary. the rosemary over there? This stick one? It, the yep, whole thing? Right in there. Okay. Do you mash that up, or, or does it's it? It's going to simmer and dissolve. You ah. can keep cutting it with the scissors. Okay. And then that becomes this gorgeous marinara sauce over here, full mm -hmm. of flavor. Okay. Now we want to fill this with ricotta cheese, right? Just like I'm a here regular lasagna. Mm -hmm. So, egg. Look at that egg. I know. It's, it's, look at that. I know. How, how orange flag. is that? Orange, uh, that yeah. was a happy chicken. Okay. And then basil, salt, okay. pepper. Just going to stir it together. And then I'm going to layer it in. So, Hoda, yes. can you take okay. the matzah and matzah. just lay it right into the dish? So, have you On ever top made, of each other? Yeah, um, just do one. No, you want to do one layer, so you want to break apart one piece. Okay, do this And one. don't worry, you can layer it. You know what, layer it, it's fine. It's all going to absorb the sauce. It's going to okay, absorb like the cheese. Yep. Oh, that. that's perfect. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. I can cook. All right, have you ever done no-cook noodles with lasagna? You no. know when you, so you just buy them out of the box, you put, this is the same thing. Okay. You don't have to do okay. anything. Um, if you have ever... Sometimes there's a type of matzah that's a little bit harder. It's called shmura matzah. Yeah, shmura. And it's, yeah, shmura. And it's um, an it's a matzah that is handmade. It's harder. Mm -hmm. If you're using that, you want to just soak it in a little water for five minutes okay. because it's not as airy and light. Okay. But that's not when you just go to the grocery store. Yeah, that's you shouldn't what you be worried you're getting shmura. Yeah. No, you <laughs> have, believe me, it costs like ten times as much. You know, I would if you're buying shmura, I would not get yeah. them regular. And then okay. I'm just going to add some. So of you this. just add it on top of the matzah. Exactly. Okay. You want to spread it to the edge. Okay. And then do you do another? Yeah, we're going to just do the cheese. Okay. So, again, just like a regular lasagna cheese, you okay. want to sprinkle some So, this parm. is mozzarella cheese you're putting on top of the Mozza ricotta. Fresh mozzarella. Parm on parm. top here? Yep, perfect. Okay. And, and then, then more sauce. More sauce. And then more matzah. And then more matzah. Exactly. Okay. So, this dish is based on a, a Sephardic dish called a mina, Your which stuff. is a matzah casserole. And you and um, it's a popular dish. Typewriter. Yeah. But look oh, how she eats matzo. Look at that. Is this for real? You need real? the butter. Though. That's how you eat it. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> she likes to make a mess, right? <laughs> Why do you do that? It's like fun. a typewriter. Here, it's try. Too really messy, though. <laughs> All right. And then, yep. And then you bake it. Oops. Okay. No way. Just, how and how long do you bake it? You bake it at 350 for 20 minutes covered, and then you want to uncover it for another 20 minutes so it gets bubbly mm. and brown. The mm. cheese melts, right? Mm. I know. Does it? It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Right, it tastes like lasagna. You don't really taste the matzah, mm -hmm. but the matzah is what anchors it, keeps it all in place. Mm. No noodles. It's the perfect Passover thing to make, you know, during Passover week. It tastes like noodles. It's it tastes yummy. like noodles. Really it's perfect, good. Right? Thank you. That's really good. It's the anchovy. And you know, add vegetables. Do it any way you want. Mm. You can just make this your own. To get this recipe, you can go to today.com slash food. Melissa, so yummy. Oh, Thank good. you. Fantastic. Time now for a delicious Easter dish that everybody in your family will love. Everybody, our <laughs> chef this morning. Morning, is the queen of Italian cuisine herself, Lydia Bastianitz. Let's get cooking. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I, have, yeah. I have two great sous chefs here. So yes, you do. Can I put okay. you to work? Yes, so you lamb. may. Nice lamb. pieces of lamb. Yeah. You know, secondary muscle. You, you want a little bit of, of the gelatin in there. Makes it good. Gelatin. Salt. Mm. Salt. Salt it up. Pepper. Pepper. A lot of salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Who's the chef here? You. I'm oh, just commenting. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> No sass. So now, no sass. since you want to get so much into into cooking, okay. do, do you want to put well, these in? I'll put those in for you. Okay, sure. you I'm put those. You put this in, <laughs> and we're gonna brown those in nice and brown, okay. mm -hmm. and they're gonna get brown like that. We're mm -hmm. gonna have some celery. Uh, can you squash those for me? What do you mean squash them? These are tomatoes. Yeah, tomatoes. Like Lucy. Okay. <laughs> like this. Like okay. this. Oh, like this. Okay. There. Oh, oh. you. Oh. oh. Wait. What? Ah. I, I made you wash your hands. Yes, that's why I wash my hands. Good. So, okay. so, you know, this, this is a, a one pot meal. Mm -hmm. And okay. today people are cooking, and that's how they're cooking. In, in one the pot. kitchen. Yeah. Yes. The desserts, the, uh, the desserts come off, so after yeah. in one pot. But the vegetables, and the meat, okay. and the beef, and all of that. So, okay. that you get it nice and brown. Nice and brown. We have well, really got a close up of me doing this <laughs> tomato grinding. You're doing a good job. Thank you. That's right. Is it done? Yeah, yeah. All yeah. Done. Here, I have even ready okay. a wet towel. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Let's, yeah, you know, we do this. like, there okay, you go. You. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I got it on my shirt. Okay. You did? No, everything's okay. What do we do? Okay. What do we do now? We continue the, the cooking part. Okay, yeah. yes. So in here, we put the onion. Uh-huh. 
Okay. What's in there? You just, so you took the onion. lamb out of there, right? The you lamb just, is out. Yeah, I got but it. But all the remnants of the lamb, you yeah. want that. Yeah, you want Ooh, I that. love yeah. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you can mix that. Mm -hmm. Put some salt in there. <laughs> and uh, you can put the bay leaves in there. Bay leaves. Bay yeah. Oh, bay leaves. You put salt. Where you go? Oh, okay. Put the salt. And put what's the this? salt. Okay. Don't do That's that yet. And, and mix. Put salt. Put okay. salt. Oh, nice. put more salt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you really salt it up, don't you? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. That's okay. not, oh, not you right. do it. Well, you told okay. me to. You asked for this. Doing what you this told is the me oregano. Oh, oregano. oregano. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. buy it, but buy it on, on, on little sticks like this. This okay. is real from Sicily. Uh -huh. And what you do, you just Look. squeeze it like this. A okay. rumble it. Oh. That's ah. the real deal. You want to try it? Uh -huh. <laughs> not, not the whole thing. Just oh, the, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, that is a little My too much. My goodness. All right. I followed your salt lead. Pinch. Paprika. Or dump the whole thing. You can dump the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That whole thing. <laughs> wow. It's and we're going to put up. the celery. Okay. Right. Celery. Okay. Mm. I'm, I'm, right. I'm over here busy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, You're still. <laughs> now, yep. no, no, I'm going to get out of the way here. You guys are doing okay. fantastic. Okay. Now, put the tomato in yet? Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Put okay. the tomato right in. All right. Okay. Ooh, that's okay. finely ground tomato. <laughs> well, you, you did a good job. Ah, you did a good job. <laughs> yes. So, hold on. Yeah, are we, babe. Are we going to keep him in the kitchen? Yes. I think Andy's doing a 10 plus. Uh, you like Thank to, you. you like to yes, he is. Okay. I mean, I'm not, I have a nice kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> what does that get you? Well, Do you cook? Not really. I need to. Yeah. Get me. Okay. So, take take. Tips. Okay. Now you can put hold on, you can put the meat back in there. Okay. And you let it cook for about an hour like this. Oh wow. Okay? Put an hour. Put a top I, on it. Yeah. Low we'll put heat. a little bit of water. <laughs> um, let it simmer. simmer. This is one of those braising. This is one of those dishes. Takes an hour, an hour and a half. Uh -huh. But at the end, you really have this mellow meat mm. that sort of breaks mellow apart. Mellow meat. Okay. On and Easter. this is. And what's, and that? This what's is, that veggie down there? That's squash. Oh. So mm. after an hour and uh, 10, 15 minutes, you touch it. If it's done, we add the squash to uh -huh. it. Okay. You're busy okay. cleaning your hands. Yeah, I'm just cleaning <laughs> myself. Good, good, good. Wow. Good. So, there you go. Do you like squash? I mean, yeah. you know, I know I know how that's fl uh, flavors. I know what yeah. she likes. Do I you know. like squash? Do I like squash? No, he yeah. doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Um, I mean, yeah, I like it. It's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, good. now, Not a the squash, guy squash doesn't take that long to cook. Right. You pick it up full speed. Okay. You want it okay. to boil, to yeah. cook. Okay. And this is how it ends. And Ooh. this is how you taste it now. Beautiful. Okay. Here, Hodes. Okay. okay. Mm, Let me you. know what you think mm, about okay. it. Hey. No, it's going to be... Yeah. Totally yummy. Yeah, it'll be really good. And you don't want to overcook the, the lamb. Squash. Oh, squash. The squash, you want, the lamb, you want mm. sort of fall up. You like yummy. It's very good. Mm. I'm not mm. a big lamb guy. That's You're great. Surprised. It's mm. very good. Mm. Mm. I'm not surprised. We're good at you. Okay, come this way? Let's yum. go dessert. Okay. Let's go. Ooh, Let's yum. Sure. Let's now go this is what I like. Now mm -hmm. this is dessert. You know what? Okay, this is good. simple. Yeah. So you have done some work there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just the assembling. You know, this is Italian. In Italian cuisine, it's called dolce al cucchiaio. A spoon dessert. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. tiramisu is a spoon dessert. Yes. Okay. So we do. We have some strawberries. Dump here. those in. We don't have much time, but we'll yeah. go ahead and assemble. Uh, some liquor. Have to go to break. Liquor. Okay. Sure yeah. okay. Okay. And but then we'll just assemble. No, yeah. This one is marinated. Is this assemble with this. <laughs> this recipe. Here. Huh? So you put okay. strawberries, those let, let me. Let me. <laughs> right. Otherwise, okay. I think we got to go to break. But your recipe is at today.com/slash food.
We are back with a holiday edition of Superfood Friday. As so many of us get ready to celebrate Easter and Passover this weekend. Today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here sharing not one but two recipes to cover each holiday. Joy, good to see you. Happy, have a good Passover. I know it's coming up. Oh, thanks so much, Alan. Yeah, we have two super fun, super yummy recipes. And I'm going to start with Easter. We are going to make these adorable Easter bunny egg cups. Ooh. And so the, the first thing I did, because I wanted to incorporate a lot of nutrition, mm -hmm. I sauteed some onion and bell pepper, nice. and got them nice and soft and got a lot of the water out. And mm -hmm. really, you can use any veggies that you want. And if you have finicky eaters, you could skip the veggies as well. Then we let that cool and we make the egg mixture. Mm -hmm. So here I have a dozen eggs. I like to lighten it up. So I did a mix of eight whole large eggs mm -hmm. and four whites, but like, you know, everyone is the boss of their sauce and sure. they can use whatever combo that they want. To make that egg mixture extra creamy, a little bit of light sour cream okay. or Greek yogurt. And then whatever herbs you have in the fridge. I had some basil mm -hmm. and some salt and some pepper. Now I'm adding in all of those yummy veggies nice right into here. the mix. Yes, I call this nutrition confetti. <laughs> <laughs> Vitamin C, lots of flavor, antioxidants. And now, to cheese or not to cheese? I say um, cheese. Again, I say cheese too. Is there really an option here, Al? Yeah. So I'm putting in some cheddar. And what I generally like to do, I'm going to put the whole thing in here, is mm -hmm. Normally, I would put half in and then I would leave half to put on the top. Mm -hmm. And then this would go, you have two options here. I'm going to move this over to the side. This would either go into your muffin tin right. and you could make perfect little Easter frittata muffins. That'll be a sure thing on your brunch spread. Or senior producer extraordinaire, Ali Markowitz, sent me this TikTok trend to try out to turn them into bunny shapes. And I think you're going to get a kick out of this. So basically what you do is you take, you, you put in your batter and right. it's very important. I lined three paper liners because you need a lot of sturdiness. Okay. You take tin foil about an inch and a half across, six inches down. You smush them into little balls. And then after the batter is already in, you see, I put a little bit of cheese on top. You're going to place three strategically at 12 o'clock, uh, then at 10 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock. And you pop these in the oven. Oh, I get 350. It. Yeah, just for about 20 Very to 25 cute. minutes. Al, these are so flippin' adorable. That's and then, great. so it comes out like this. And then what I've done is, just for the decor, I used rosemary for little whiskers. Aww. I used a little piece of olive for the nose and That's then cute. sunflower seeds. Very nice. Isn't now, that you've got, so cute? You've got uh, some matcha brie muffins. Matcha brie muffins. Bri, I'm sorry, so, brie. Ali Markowitz so just got in my ear and said brie. <laughs> So, so in my house, like my mom, we think she's world famous for her matzo brai. And matzo brai is basically um, fried matzo. You let matzo soak in egg and then you put all sorts of different mix-ins in and you fry it up like a great big pancake oh. on the skillet. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to make scrumptious muffins and these really hit the spot. I start with five pieces of whole wheat matzah. If you can't find whole wheat, you can go with the regular white. Mm. And I basically crunch them and up. these aren't egg matzahs. These are regular plain old matzah. Any matzah will work. Okay. Any matzah will work. Because then what I'm doing is you see that I'm crunching them here. And mm -hmm. what happens is the whole wheat brings the extra fiber. Right. And then I add a little bit of water on top and I let it soak yep. for about... See this? For okay. about two minutes. Then you want to drain it off. And now I'm adding in some egg. Yeah. I'm adding in a little bit of butter. If people want to skip the butter, you can use a neutral oil mm -hmm. like um, avocado oil or grapeseed oil. Now I have loads of chopped apple because this is going to be a sweet oh, okay. cinnamony apple maple version. A little bit of maple syrup. We've got cinnamon because cinnamon makes everything a little bit better. Little and vanilla. some salt. Vanilla extract for the win. And then you mix this up. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. Ow. Oh, my goodness. We cannot 
get enough of these. And I also I have a savory that. version mm -hmm. that I'm going to show on Instagram. Is Joy, those great? look fantastic. Thanks so much. You have a great holiday. We can't wait to see you here in the studio. That's what we're looking for. Oh, to. And I'm wishing everybody a wonderful, loving Easter and happy Passover. Thanks so much, Al. Okay, take Mwah. care, Love Joy. you. For these recipes, we love you too. Head to today.com slash food. We are back with Today Food, and we are in for a sweet treat this morning because one of our absolute favorites is here, Christina Tosi, chef and founder of Milk Bar. And just in time for Easter, she's going to teach us how to make her latest creation. Are you ready for the carrot marshmallow crackle cake? Oh, crack. Not to be confused with the crack cake, which you also crack pie, <laughs> yeah. which you also make. I oh mean, my gosh. this is great. First of all, how are you? I'm it's wonderful. Nice. How are you? Good. What's been going on? I mean, spring has sprung it's in here. our kitchen at Milk Bar. I know. So listen, everything you do, you do with a little different twist. Yeah. Carrot cake. This yeah. is different. This isn't like normal carrot cake. It's different. Okay. But it starts with the basics of all great baked goods. Okay. Butter and yes. sugar. Yes. So butter and light brown sugar okay. in the bowl. Yeah. I'm going to get you involved. Okay. That's right. Turn it on. We'll do yes, a little. Yes, I know this thing. That's is that it. locked? That yeah. Keeps... Okay. Here we go. There no, you this go. Way. Cooking show. I don't know if you know. I, you want to know? I'm waiting. Girl, okay. you just tell me when. Okay. I know. Up. All right. We're doing so a little So you cream the yes. butter and the sugars together. You add two beautiful eggs. Look at those eggs. These are going to give the cake moisture lift richness okay from there we stream in a little bit of oil okay. colorless flavorless oil this is going to give our cake that really dense moist sponge mm -hmm. that you're used to in any great cake but especially a carrot cake. okay so right now this is just basically your basic cake recipe this is just a basic cake okay. recipe yeah. from there dry ingredients yeah. some flour some salt baking powder baking soda baking powder gives your cake lift yeah baking soda gives your cake spread oh I stretch. never knew it like that okay there you go and then a little bit of cinnamon okay everyone has a different take on carrot cake and mine is about making anyone whether you love carrot cake or you're not sure yes. how you feel about carrot cake this is the carrot cake okay for you perfect because now. we're sort of defying all the odds I know. so the dry ingredients mm -hmm. go into that mixing bowl now should I, I know. should I make Get this it. faster or no well so once you have the dry ingredients mm -hmm. to a cake this is a pro tip you don't want to over mix I know you just want to incorporate right you want to you want to over mix or mix a lot when you're making bread because you want it to be dense and mm. stringy and glutinous mm -hmm. but a cake you don't want you okay want so that's probably right enough right tender. here so that's it okay oh what oh, 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 don't over mix it okay okay don't so over mix from there we shred some carrots okay fresh carrots shredded down yeah this is a fun place by the way if you don't have carrots at home you can use any sort of root vegetable Believe like what not. else? I mean, turnip. this is gonna sound weird. Turnip, thank you, Hoda. Wow. Well, wow. Um, turn up, Hoda. Turn up. Turn up from downtown. <laughs> there. Root Hoda just turned oh, up. Really? I know it sounds crazy, rutabaga. but it's rutabaga. There you go, Al. Like. Okay. Bring one or more root vegetables okay. in. How's it tasting, guys? It's not even oh bad. Are you dying? It's out okay. of bounds. Okay. This is right. So I know you're I like, know okay, you can. Okay, I'm gonna get in there. Well, we fold we, the carrot. Oh, fold it. Okay. That cake All right. Batter. Okay. What's yeah. the crunchy stuff? So the crunchy stuff is what we call. Um, 
our like brown butter crackle. It's this okay. bowl here. It's everything. Oh my gosh. Okay, bring okay, that so over there's here. Like there's so we bake okay. the cake yes. yeah, you in advance. And okay. then this is where we start to talk about our flavor story at Milk Bar. So okay. this cake you can get at the bakeries. All over the U.S. you can get online. We'll ship it to you. You can get it right now if you don't want to do all this. That's right. We okay. got you at MilkBarStore.com. But basically, we cut the cakes out into rounds, mm -hmm. and then we start to build the cake. I mean, that is so fun. Okay, so layer one is cake, and then what do we have? Cake. Add? Then, so let's, I'll put the what cake down. Mm -hmm. oh You're going to go, I know, get in there. What Just is take it? a little nibble. So it's oh cake. Oh, my gosh. It's milk soaked. This is the crunchies that they're okay. talking about. Oh, my gosh. It's basically bad. like a, a brown butter rice crispy treat What's made that, just into milk? a layer of What are you doing, cake. just soaking it? This is just a little That's bit a of milk to That's keep the, the cake yeah. nice. Uh, it's a That's protein. the bow thruster. Yes. So you're Michael making a cake bar. at home. Maybe you mm -hmm. overbaked it, whatever. It's yes. a little bit of cake little, soap. Okay. And then so our this next... is marshmallow fluff. I mean, I can't oh, eat no it. No cream cheese frosting. Guys, how does it taste? We're just making a layer. Marshmallow fluff. Get it in there. You spread it around. No cream cheese frosting. No cream cheese frosting. Okay, I'm trying to This is like the right amount of sweetness. It's all about that crackle, that brown butter, those toasty I did a terrible job of this. Okay. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, what's this orange thing, though? What's that? This is carrot marshmallow fluff. Okay. Frosting. <laughs> okay. So we top it with some caramelized crispies, some mini right, marshmallows I try this. Get to tell the, the flavor story. Part. Okay, let I know this part. is a big moment, I know. my friend. It was a Get huge the moment. What do you? you I like this. Okay, I Please tell me they're part of your cooking show. They're like it's so <laughs> your good. Oh my gosh! Would you die? Yeah. I think we have to. Christina, I'm going to tell you now. I don't like carrot cake. I love. This. Mm. This is like incredible. Recipetoday.com slash food, or you can buy it at Milk Bar. Oh my God. Good Thursday morning. Severe weather sweeping across the country. And it's impacting a lot of holiday weekend travel plans. It's April the 6th. This is today. On the move, powerful storms stretching from the south all the way to New England today. The same system that spawned this deadly tornado in Missouri. Glen Allen will never be the same. There's no doubt about it. This morning, a first-hand look at the damage. 